None. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome and thank you for being here in the Wednesday, November 4th, 2020 City Council meeting in Garden Ridge. It is 6 p.m. Roll call, all council are present. Council, thanks for being here. And if, you, if everyone would please stand and join me in the pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, everyone. So item number four on the agenda is for us to uh, recognize some uh, young men in our community for some pretty exceptional uh, service and accomplishment achievement. Um, it's something that uh, we've, been, we've been looking at doing for quite a while and I'm proud to say we've finally figured it out, uh, but we figured it out about the time that it, we all became very antisocial. Uh, and, but uh, nevertheless, we're, we're, we're gonna kick this off tonight. So these are, uh, these are the first four um, in our community that we're, we're going to recognize. And what we're gonna be doing, I'm, I'm gonna step down here in a minute, and I'll explain how we're gonna run this, but uh, what we wanna do is we wanna recognize the achievement of uh, four young men uh, attaining the uh, rank of Eagle Scout. Uh, something that is uh, uh, undeniably uh, significant in an individual's life, significant enough, and I tell some people that aren't necessarily familiar with it, that it's one of the few things you can do as a, a young person that you'll put on your resume as an adult. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's something that you, you will carry with you uh, for your life, uh, for the rest of your life. Um, I, I thought about quizzing the, the uh, Eagles on a few, few facts, but I'm, uh, but I'm not gonna do that to them. Uh, and so instead, I'm just gonna give you some that I think are, are uh, just a couple that are pretty remarkable. One is uh, out of the millions that, that uh, are in scouting, only 4% uh, ever attain Eagle, ever, in the entire history of the scouting program. Um, and, the, and you four as Eagles are amongst a, a pretty, obviously a pretty elite group. Uh, in numbers, but also in uh, key roles in the world, uh, and particularly in our nation, uh, president, Supreme Court justice, captains of industry, uh, uh, astronauts, um, and uh, one that I, I personally think is, is really a standout is, I don't know if you know this, but 11 Medal of Honor recipients were Eagle Scouts, 11. Uh, I, I mentioned some of the things that some of the Eagles uh, uh, have done in their lives, and, and, and when I say captains of industry, we're talking about big name uh, uh, CEOs and people that have really innovated in, in business and industry uh, and technology uh, and government. But the thing that's the, that, that is the thread with all of them and that you have proven is the propensity to serve, to be dedicated to, to something, to put a lot of effort, at least you know the 21 merit badges and all that other stuff that you have to do, but, but to be dedicated to uh, a organization, frankly, to the community, to your nation, and to be, to be committed to bettering yourself, learning more, and being a productive, member of society, something that uh, is really important to a lot of us folks who are a little older, uh, to see that, that young folks are, are taking that responsibility on. And the, you know, some, of the, some of the positions and some of the things that I mentioned 
are very clearly people that have uh, taken those responsibilities and built on, on, that, on that character and that uh, sense of service and selfless service. And all of you had to do projects. And I submit you've done more than just that one project that you got credit for. And I will, am willing to bet that you're going to do a lot more than that uh, in the near future and probably for the rest of your lives. So it's, it's fitting that our community acknowledge uh, the, the folks that attain the, the rank of Eagle. And we make sure that people know who they are and what they, what they uh, have accomplished. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to call you. And, and, in, and if you don't understand what I'm saying or you, or you can't read, it'll even have your picture up there. Uh, so when you see your picture, come on up. Uh, we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be six feet away from you, so I'm not going to be wearing a mask. I'll take it off when I get down there. And I invite you to take yours off or leave it on. It's your call. Uh, and then what we'll do is uh, I'll hand you a certificate and then uh, and something else and give you the opportunity if you want to say five or six words, you don't have to say anything. Uh, and, and then also invite the family to come up masked because you will be getting close to people on the way up and take some pictures if you'd like. Uh, and uh, it'll be on the record that our city acknowledges uh, and appreciates your dedication. So. Let me come on down. Uh, it says, Certificate of Recognition. This certificate is presented to, in this case, Jake Hogue. On behalf of the Garden Ridge community, we are pleased to congratulate you and recognize you for your attainment of the rank of Eagle Scout. And it's signed by me and it has our seal on it. So, I would love to shake your hand, and someday we will, right? <laughs> And I'll tell you what, hold that certificate out, and we can stay six feet apart if you give me a piece of it. There you go. There you go. Perfect. There you go. How about that? Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, John. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. And for people listening, it's Tristan Arvidsson. No, take your time. It's all right. Andy, are you here? No. Your dad's not here? Um, I, the reason I asked is because I want to I wanted give Andy credit because he's the one that wrote to me and asked me about this. Yeah. So in his absence, please uh, let him know that I acknowledge yeah. that I, I appreciate him taking the time to send me a note. Uh, and uh, he was, uh, he, he kind of lit a fire under me and I said, you know, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. So, yay dad. Yeah. <laughs>
Francis, I didn't say it. It was Marshall of Oz. So the last thing before I before we close this uh, item out is um, I think it's really important that everyone in here understand that like most things that we do in our lives, we don't do them by ourselves. And I know for a fact that the families of these four young men uh, probably spend a lot of time on on getting ranked and. Oh, yeah. Making and making stuff and working on merit badges and taking them to taking them to events and everything else. So I applaud the family. You all want to stay for the next couple hours? <laughs> I was going to say, and they all have enough sense to get out of here as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that closes out item number four. Moving on to item number five, city employee recognitions and employee introductions. Uh, hand it over to our city administrator, Ms. King. A thank you note was received from the Forest of Garden Ridge Homeowners Association Board of Directors thanking the Water Commission for authorizing uh, Commissioner Jim Miller to speak at their annual HOA meeting. Uh, he spoke to them about our upcoming uh, enhancements through the AMI, the new AMI uh, system and they thanked him for giving them an opportunity to hear it first. The second thank you came through our building inspector, Wilbert Lins. He was doing an inspection on a fence at a residence here in the city, and the owners of the property asked him to convey their appreciation to the front office personnel. Um, they said they're very friendly, very helpful, and they spoke specifically about an, uh, an incident where they called and Michelle, our utility clerk, was able to tell them how to discard uh, of some paint. Um, and they were very appreciative of uh, the information she gave them. And they said also all the ladies up front are equally helpful and friendly. And then I received a thank you from Marilyn Winters, who was the precinct 2005 election judge. Um, she thanks the city for, for providing the community center for the early voting period as well as election day. She said it allowed them to provide, for, provide our citizens with a very safe place to vote. They were able to keep um, the voting machine six feet apart and had the necessary space to ensure that the voters could maintain a safe social distance while they were waiting in line to vote. They had some statistics she uh, brought forward as well. There were seven, over 700 voters each day of the first four days. Early voting was 7,274 voters during that 18-day period. Election day was 334 voters. Um, she said that if we would have tried to do this here in this room, it would have been very difficult. She also thanks city staff, Kim Ryan, Stanley George, and the rest of the city staff who assisted during that time. And she appreciates everyone's willingness to always help in any way possible. Okay. We have a couple of employees that have anniversaries during the month of November. First one is Ron Eberhardt, our police chief, six years of service with the city. And our second one is our public works director, Steven Steinmetz, 20 years. Chief, we love you, but you got a long way to go. <laughs> but uh, everyone, 
um, 20 years. I don't know if you know, but it's, it's Mr. Steinmetz is the longest serving staff member in the city of Garden Ridge. Uh, now, Councilman McCaw had been on council about 40 years prior to that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, nobody else who had anything to do with the city uh, longer than longer than that. But, but, uh, and and Mr. Steinmetz, Stephen is. Uh, is the epitome of a public works person coming up through the ranks. We hired him as a public works employee uh, and uh, moved up. And eventually when we split uh, public works and water, it was obvious that Stephen needed to be the person to take care of public works and has been doing it ever since. So I guess, you know, if you think about public works in the form that it is now, he's the only public works director we've ever had. So. You're, you know, you're beating your competition. There's no doubt about that. Uh, <laughs> but, but 20 years is is obviously a rather remarkable uh, feat, and something that we certainly didn't want to just uh, put a picture up there and and uh, give them a hearty handshake that we can't even give them right now. But uh, I want to do something a little bit more. So if you would approach the bench, I'll come down and meet you. <laughs> so I'm going to take my mask off just like I told the, told the guys today, but we didn't want to let this opportunity pass without giving you a little something that uh, in, in memory. And uh, I believe we have a picture of this as well, so you all can see it. But it says Stephen Steinmetz honoring 20 years of service. <coughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Ms. Kane, uh, for, for helping us make sure that happened, and uh, staff as well. It's, a, it, uh, it's a very important to us to, to uh, call that out and recognize it. And, and thank you very much for all that you've done for the city, Stephen, and continue to do. Our, our go-to guy. Um, that concludes item number five. Number six is citizen comment period. We had nobody signed up for citizens' comments. So uh, if you did want to speak and you, for, and you didn't have the chance to sign up, remember at the end of the council meeting, you'll have another opportunity, and you don't have to have signed up for that one. Item number seven, the consent agenda. There were four items on the consent agenda that's in the package, uh, public, uh, public package. And I'll, I'll ask now, does anybody have anything that want? they want to, to uh, pull and have a discussion about, or would anyone like to uh, make a motion to approve all four things? Move to approve all on the consent agenda. I have a motion to approve all the consent agenda from place three. Second. I get a second. Place two with the second. Any further discussion or questions? Left side? Right side? Okay, place three, place two, motion and second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is unanimous. Moving on to item number eight, staff reports. Uh, as we've been doing for the last few months in the staff reports, uh, also the addition of the continuity of operations uh, in the context of COVID and how things are going with the ops. So uh, I will now hand it over to our city administrator. Ma'am. The only things that I would like to add to my report is to let you know that staff or department heads are working on a step and grade pay program. Um, we are working within the amount that was budgeted by council for the 20 fiscal year 20, 
one budget and we plan to bring something to council concerning that program for y'all to look at and uh, possibly approve in about a two month time frame. Also, we provided flu shots to city staff and the mayor, a number of our staff as well as the mayor took flu shots. We did that on October 18th, so we can stay healthy. That's all I had. Any questions? Excuse me. Any questions or comments for city administrator? Right side, left side. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Moving on to finance and HR, Ms. Ford. Now. Good evening. Whoa, it's working now. Um, for those of you that haven't had a chance to be up in City Hall for the last couple of weeks, I want to take a moment and introduce you to our newest employee, Jacqueline Marino. She <laughs> she's part time and she's joining me in the accounting department, um, and we're very very excited to have her here. Um, and then also, if you are up at the City Hall next week, you might see some faces that you see maybe once a year, or they may be new to you. The audit starts on Monday, so the auditors will be floating around the halls. That's all I have. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, Jacqueline, or as she likes to be called, Jack, yes. uh, I just let you know, we're, we're really glad you're here and you've been saved the having to do the parade and shake everybody's hand because of the, the COVID situation. But typically, that's what we would do is that everybody would get an opportunity to, to uh, welcome you and shake your hand. But so consider it done, so to speak, Todd. But, um, but uh, welcome, and we are really glad that you, that you uh, uh, chose to come here and help us. Thank Thanks. Next up is City Secretary, monthly activity report. Hi, um, so I wanted to update council on the new lobby hours that we have at City Hall starting this month. Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday will be open eight to five um, as usual, but Thursday we actually have extended hours. We are open until six, whereas Friday we are open, oh, I'm sorry, Tuesday we're open until six, I'm sorry. And then Friday we will actually be closing the lobby at four now. Um, yesterday was our first day with the extended hours. And I would say it was a success because we had a phone call um, where a resident actually found um, some lost dogs. And because they were registered with the city, we were able to reunite them within um, maybe 10 or 20 minutes. Um, the next update I have is regarding our internet bandwidth here at City Hall. We, last week we purchased an upgrade for our bandwidth because we have you know, new services such as streaming meetings and everything. Um, so far, that's been going pretty well. Um, and speaking of streaming, our streaming numbers for this past month are 111 views for our city council meeting, as well as 44 views for all of the commission meetings in the last month. And that is all I have. Thank you, Ms. Palmy. By the way, we didn't fire our city secretary. Uh, she's just out this week. And so our assistant city secretary is standing in and doing a fantastic job. So thank you. Uh, Ms. Balmy. Um, I do want to call, uh, before I uh, offer any questions, I do want to offer, uh, offer up a, a point, and that is in the never-ending, and I mean this sounds like a joke, but in the never-ending quest to ensure that we're giving uh, the best service we can to our citizens, that's the reason why they are open later on one day, because we know that a lot of folks work and they're coming back uh, from San Antonio or wherever, and, and they don't have to try to rush back here to be able to do business if they have to do business in person by five o'clock. They can now knowing, know and predict that on, the two, on Tuesdays they could come here uh, in, all the way till six o'clock. And we just, we thought that would be something that would be important for, for our citizens to be able to do. Uh, and we thought that with the limited traffic we get on Friday afternoons, that would be a good concession to, um, to back it off on, on just the Fridays. So that said, uh, left side, questions or comments for City Evan? Sir. 
Were you be, being facetious when you said the limited traffic on Friday? That's no. the worst day. Of well, Friday. no, at the afternoons we haven't, we've been doing, it's been pretty light. Oh, oh you mean in a lobby? Yes. Oh, no, I'm no. sorry. No, I don't mean traffic on the roads. <laughs> no, no, no. No, we got nothing to do with that. But no, I'm talking about traffic in the lobby. <laughs> Point well taken. Yes. Right side, questions or comments? Okay, thanks again, Kat. Um, moving on now to PD. Chief. Yes, sir. Uh, most of my information is in the report. Do want to point out um, we will be moving. I recently moved two days ago one of the traffic signs, calming signs over from Shanethal to Bat Cave. It needs a, I need to get over there and get it adjusted for the, the correct speeds. Tomorrow the other one will be moved. We'll have one up on 2252. We've also uh, I've purchased a new traffic analyzing device that uh, is, is out right now deployed collecting data on, on one of our city streets. We'll be able to use that to monitor traffic movements and counts for different streets and roadways. And that will be, uh, that will be out for quite a while. I, I, we have a, quite a few planned events for that. Uh, our court last month went very well. It was all Zoom. And uh, we had a few people show up here. Everything went off without a hitch. We will not have court in November. We have court in December. Court in December comes early and we will be doing it the same way unless we are told by the Office of Court Administration to make some adjustments. We plan on having most of that done by Zoom as well. Uh, we had one, uh, I wanted to let you know, we, since we're doing COVID updates, I had one employee that we quarantined for one day pending a relative's test. It came back in one day as negative, so they were allowed to come back to work. So other than that, we've had no issues and, and no exposures in the PD. That's all I have. Thank you, Chief. Right side, questions, comments for the PD? No. No. Moving on to AD, Public Works. Mr. Steinmetz. Good evening. See, we didn't have mics like that when he started 20 years ago. <laughs> Good evening. Um, in October, um, for trash removal, we, re we uh, removed two large sofas from uh, old Nacado or from Nacogdoches Loop. Um, for the month of October, rainfall amounts was basically a trace up there at our shop. Um, park maintenance, we uh, look we. Located some electric line by concession stand. Uh, we replaced an electric line supplying Pavilion One. Turned out it was the wrong gauge, so uh, that was a good thing. Uh, for the rental property, we replaced some AC ducts because they were getting some moisture in those and changed out some light bulbs and upgraded them to uh, LED light fixtures. We currently have one dog in our uh, impounded, but uh, somebody's already claiming that one, so it's going to be adopted pretty soon. Um, we have uh, dumpsters this month for the month of November. And we had a uh, few more deer calls than we normally do. We had 22 for the uh, month of October. Last month it was only eight, so we're up a little bit on deer calls. And that's all I have to report. Thanks, sir. Left side questions, comments for Public Works? Um, yes. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I would like to ask again, you guys, your department does a really good job of, um, if you will, verifying IDs on the dumpster weekends. You, your guys are usually there on Saturdays. Yes. Uh, we just need to make sure that the guys that are on Sunday, because this is, a, this is a service that we provide for our citizens. It's not a county event. And I'm, I feel pretty sure there are a lot of people who just take advantage of it. Okay, so, I'll, I'll let them know to yeah, be. I've been told, you know, I, I've gone up there and said, you know, you didn't check my ID, and they said, oh, well, we know you. I said, no, no, you don't. No, you don't know me. Trust okay. me, you don't know me. So, and just for example, but other, the guys are really good about it. Okay, Thanks. I'll, I'll let them know. Thanks. Thank you, sir. And um, you, you said dumpsters, and I just want to be clear uh, that the weekends, all four weekends, is it started eight? Is it eight to five? Eight to five. Eight to five. Good. Yeah. Um, and they're usually very well used, and uh, so we appreciate that. 
Okay, moving on to item 8F, Water Department. Good evening. Mr. Parsons. Good evening, thank you. Am I on? Hello, check. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you can notice that this last month in October, we used quite a bit more Trinity water than Edwards. Um, we also found that um, all of our samples came back negative and uh, we had reported that uh, our, our water loss this last month was really good. We did find that Bracken Fire Department uh, had been using some water. Uh, our, our chair, uh, Valdez, for the Water Commission actually uh, saw them using some water, so we went and talked to them. They, uh, they periodically come in our system uh, and use some water and test some fire hydrants to do some things. And we've told them that's fine just to collect the data and send it to us. Well, apparently they've been collecting the data, but they haven't been, we have not been able to get that from them. So we have a system now where we can see that uh, and that the data will now reflect that. I have to admit that it's very small and minor and you probably won't see any change at all, but I just wanna let you know that, that we're trying to keep uh, up with what's going on being lost in our city. Next, you can see that we actually had five meters that we had to replace uh, this last month for zero reads. And um, in our projects, most of our projects are continuing to be ongoing. And uh, our COVID-19 pandemic, we are holding uh, steady with, with good morale and we're able to continue to do all the things that we need to do while keeping safe distance and making sure everything is clean. Um, that being said, I'd like to touch more on the AMI meter system and to talk about the progress of that. We're going to be doing some customer education. This will happen November 23rd. We'll also have a second one on December 10th. It will both start at 6 p.m. We will have a representative from Secure Vision, which is the company that will be doing the install. And, uh, and they'll be speaking about the meter and stuff like that, as well as the customer portal. Um, we are also going to stream that so people can view it and we'll have that up on our website. Um, we're offering a pilot program of 20 customers. If you sign up now, this has already been announced at the Water Commission meeting. And so we have just over half filled. So if you would like a meter, uh, at your house, please sign up on the city website so you can be part of that pilot program. That being said, we're also getting a batch of meters. Uh, and once we get that batch of meter, we're gonna be putting them in place where we currently have meters that we are reading by hand. And also we're going to put them in periodic places where we are um, curious to know how well they'll work and the reaches of the, all of the corners of our city. Um, we have a pre-construction meeting that we'll be having with our engineers and we will also be having with the contractors. This will be to hammer out the details of the installation of the meters citywide. Uh, in that meter installation, uh, Secure Vision will have up to five individuals that will be installing the meters. We will have an operator with them. We will knock on the door. We will inform them that we are changing the meter and we will give them information where they can get on the customer portal we will answer their questions um, after the meter has been installed we will flush the line making sure that we get out of uh, get out all air and or, and or possible debris and uh, and then we'll restore their service this should this should take no longer than 20 minutes the reality is it shouldn't take longer than five minutes um, but um, but 20 minutes is, is in case we have the longest time period uh, needed for that. Um, that being said, if we come upon a customer who does not answer the door and there's water running, uh, we will not uh, change that meter. We will skip it to make sure they're not in the shower and we shut off their water. That would be terrible. So we are going to make sure that we skip those. Uh, if someone's using the water and, uh, and they are not able to shut off the water, we can also skip that and come back to it. Um, we are planning, we are projecting to start the project November 30th and be finalized by December 18th. This is also due to the meters coming in on time uh, and um, 
whatever else may come up. But we're working diligently to make sure we get all that done. We also have some staff training coming up. With the staff training, we'll have our um, office staff as well as our operators that will be trained in their portion of what they'll be doing and uh, that they really know what's going on and all questions, we're gonna get all questions answered and that we everyone feels comfortable with it. Contingency plan, we also have a contingency plan uh, just in case things don't fall right into place. We're working hard that that happens uh, to where we get everything and they fall like dominoes. Uh, to be frank, if they don't, what we're gonna be able to do is we'll be able to do a drive-by system that'll have the old and the new meters that'll be read by a drive-by. Once we get those read, then we can upload them into the system. If uh, that's the worst case scenario, the, the if a secondary scenario would be as if we just aren't unable to get the integration between the AMI system and the building software, uh, with our first few meters, we'll be able to enter those in uh, uh, manually. And so that should be a right at 100 to 150 meters the most. Um, that being said, by the time we get into all the meters being installed, we'll have all that worked out. All the kinks will be worked out. That's why we're doing that pilot program. And with that, I'll, I'll answer any questions you have, Mr. Mayor. Great, thank you, sir. Over on the right side, questions on any of the uh, water department activity report or what you've heard? Sure. Great job, Mr. Parson. Thank you. Uh, exciting moving into this AMI. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the, the effects, and I think the Water Commission is too, in regard to uh, water leaks and all that. Next up is the G Library. Ms. Crossland. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to give you a slight update. Uh, you can tell I'm rather proud. We got a Hancher Library grant. Uh, this was to update our children's technology. Uh, what we had was some very old, they're called AWE, A-W-E computers. We literally wore them out. We bought them used from Schertz Library because they were getting new ones about four years ago. So in, in computer years, they were already kind of dinosaurs. Uh, one is still working, but barely. Um, the, the nice thing about these is if a child can toddle up to it, they can usually, it's very intuitive, they can work with these educational programs. They're preloaded. Uh, they don't require an internet connection, so that's easy for us to put around, and uh, then they can't get where they don't belong. Uh, we got two of those. They're also called early literacy stations. And then our Lego robotics programs have been very, very popular. But some children have actually kind of done everything on that. So we asked for two more um, programs, uh, eight station, eight kits of uh, Lego Mindstorm and eight kits of Lego Spike. So uh, this will go on up into high school and maybe it will keep some of our parents who are very, uh, very good at this. Maybe it will keep some of them uh, interested as well. Uh, we got the full amount that we requested, which was $15,186.80, but they rounded it off and gave me an extra 20 cents, so I'm excited about that. Uh, you can't make a woman much happier than to give her this much money to go out and spend, even if it's not just for me. Uh, and if you have any questions about that before I go on. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions on the grant or anything she's talked about so far, right side? It's pretty exciting. And then uh, just wanted to give a little report on Trunk or Treat last Saturday. It, uh, we thought it just went really well. Uh, 516 people passed through our, our entrance uh, gate. Um, you can see some of the pictures here. A few came through the invisible perimeter that we didn't have up. Um, everyone seemed to be very well behaved. Um, and they seemed grateful for, for us having it. They said, thank you so much for having this. And they taught their children to say thank you. In a word, they were just good Garden Ridge people. Um, I, I give, give credit to the people who provided trunks, uh, five of which were city employees besides Wendy and I. 
one councilwoman who even gave away doggy treats, uh, five library volunteers, five GRCPAA volunteers, Shelby Trial, Ken and Brenda Lowry, Jesse Reyes, and Water Commissioner Jesse Valdez. They took wonderful care of all the parking. They just made it so easy for us. Uh, we had Lions Club volunteers, Dick Holloway, Jim Newbold, and Steve Galletz. They were monitoring and troubleshooting, sort of. I mean, no, there was no trouble to shoot, actually. They, but they were there. And a special thanks goes to Public Works' Eric Lohman, who helped us get everything set up, and Chris Graff, who helped us get set up. And then after it was over, Chris, bless his heart, he took most everything down. Because by that time, Wendy and I were kind of dead on our feet. So we just are so grateful. They were so cheerful and willing to do whatever. And you can see the, the um, food truck there, Gracie's Ice Cream. Uh, she seemed very happy with the evening. She stayed busy and she wants to come back next year. So it, all in all, we would consider it to be a successful evening and we hope it'll be bigger and better. And we couldn't have offered, ordered better weather than what we had. Uh, and then, there's no rest. Next Tuesday is uh, vet the Veterans Day celebration. Um, it's going to be held at 10.30 a.m. Next year it'll be on the, on the hour, Mayor, not 10.30. Um, <laughs> in the Community and Events Center. This is going to give us a way to spread out more, uh, keep social distance, and we have a lot of protocols in place. We'll be serving people and not letting people get up and wander around. Um, we plan to offer a video to put on the city website after the fact because I don't think we're going to be able to have streaming for this uh, event, though we wish we could. Um, I just, I love our military and we never want to forget about them. We want to honor them always. We, we, we owe them a great debt of gratitude. And that's all. Great, thank you so much, Linda. Um, over on the left side, questions or comments on uh, any of the stuff that the library just offered? No, just, uh, I did want to thank as well, my, the people, Jesse, for example, was there and someone that really helped move smoothly and Wendy was bouncing all over the place and Wendy sent her daughter over to help me because I was by myself. I guess I look sad, I don't know. But um, <laughs> yeah, everybody did a super job. Jesse was a whip cracker, making the line go faster, but. Amen. <laughs> He was that. Thank you. Councilman Arvin. He's like trying to wake him up. Okay. Yeah. I just want to congratulate you on both the grant and the trunk retreat. It was a great event, and I know my two boys really enjoyed it, and it was a it was a lifesaver for them. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. They look so cute. <laughs> Chicken. Yeah, first of all, the grant, congratulations, and uh, thank you for doing that. It uh, takes a little pressure off of the, the city budget, but at the same time gives the opportunity to enhance some things that we have in, in, in the library. And, and I would hope that anybody listening to the library report sees how vibrant our library is and how it reaches young kids, um, you know, middle kids, and, and uh, adult kids as well. Uh, the programs, the projects, the, the quest to always look for things to bring folks in, to be able to get involved as individuals, as families. And then, you know, you put on top of all that with Trunk or Treat, put on top of that uh, Veterans Day, uh, could not be prouder of our library, our leadership in our library, uh, the resources that you all give to the library or, or allocate to the library and also the, the uh, volunteers, of course, the volunteers. The Trunk or Treat, tremendous, tremendous uh, experience. Uh, like you heard, well over 500 people, probably quite a bit more than what we counted. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 all the folks that set up the trunks and the talk of competition amongst them uh, yes. and how um, some of them we're gonna, we're already committing to do, do bigger and better next year with the trunks, but uh, the, the, the spirit, the, the, um, the the 
the, just the, the, the glee that you saw of the kids. And I watched a, a dinosaur and a chicken in front of me for a while, and they were having <laughs> one heck of a time. Uh, my daughter had a great time, too. Uh, <laughs> the ladybug. She was a ladybug. Uh, but the, the, yeah, and, and so many people put so much into it. Staff, and, and, and I'll tell you, it starts with the staff leadership that we spent quite a, quite a bit of time in here turning over every stone and say, how do we do this? How do we make sure we keep it safe? How do we keep it moving? How do we, how do we conduct this? And, and people that, that uh, were not mentioned as individuals, but I can tell you the leadership of the, the city staff all had uh, a, a lot of involvement in the development of this. Linda being, of course, the, the spearhead of it and the one that, that uh, put, the, put the, the most work in. But, but everyone in staff meetings, we spent a lot of time to make sure that, that it was a, a great event. And then the volunteers and the organizational volunteers, you know, as you said, the, the Lions and the GRCPAA and, and, and all the folks that got involved, uh, just phenomenal. I, 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 think, I think it's safe to say that, that a lot of people were, it was, it was sorely needed in the environment where we've all been hiding uh, and uh, instead of hiding we all got to come out and and uh, celebrate safely and in a in a pretty pretty in some cases hilarious manner uh, and a lot of people had a lot of fun and i just think that we can say we're back thanks thanks to you and your team linda thank you very much thank you Mayor. Uh, i'm very proud of the community and and you know it's one of those things that we talked about it this morning and said, we've got nothing negative. We've got nothing that, you know, we, what can we do better? We can make it bigger, <laughs> you know? But we can, we, can, uh, um, we can make it bigger. That was about all we came up with. Everything else was so good. Uh, and um, and everybody, was, everybody had a great time. So I, I really, I, I just can't say enough about it. The Veterans Day celebration, by the way, the, the inside joke, she said why it had to be on the hour, is like, I, I told staff this morning that every time we have an event that's at 30, uh, it takes up a lot more real estate on the sign, and the sign real estate is very, very uh, uh, valuable, and so I said, you gotta do it on the hours, because if you do it on the 30 minutes, it just takes up uh, a, a whole lot more of the sign. That's why she said that, but we'll do it at 10.30 if, if that's the best time to do it next year as well. But if you haven't been to it, uh, please come to it. We're, we're gonna do a lot to make sure that it's a safe environment uh, with social distancing and everything, but the opportunity to acknowledge uh, the many veterans in our community uh, and to come together and to, and to show some of the veterans that are attending as well uh, what, we think, what we think of them and, and how much we value their contributions. It's another great thing that the library uh, and Linda uh, and family have, uh, have been doing for, for quite a few years now. And I, I encourage you to not only attend, but to encourage friends and neighbors to attend as well. So Linda, thank you very much for all of that, all of it. Thank you, Mayor. Next up is item number nine, city engineer project and status quo. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, just a quick update, uh, 2252. Um, Kat, can you bring up that slide? Uh, we're continuing to work on that. Uh, we've got a preliminary design, um, maybe a little tight to see, but uh, uh, we've uh, coordinated with uh, TxDOT plans and uh, basically from about Back Cave Road to Arrowwood, we have uh, several conflicts with uh, proposed drainage improvements, uh, site grading on the roadway. Uh, so uh, we've met with staff mayor on our meetings and uh, have a proposed plan and uh, we'll be taking that to TxDOT to get their uh, we're still working with their 60 percent plans uh, they're moving to vinyl design and we'll be coordinating with them have another meeting with them and then uh, we'll be ready to proceed uh, based on their schedule with uh, constructing these improvements most of them are uh, uh, aligned conflicts with the drainage culvert and so we're having to lower our line to get under their culverts uh, and protect the line for the future uh, there's some uh, casing that needs to be extended from the roadway and some of the loons for paving 
uh, adding a valve or two in the system. So, um, uh, yeah, so this is moving along and should have more to report uh, after we meet with TxDOT and uh, looking at possible, probably going, based on their schedule, probably going to construction sometime spring of next year. So, any questions on that? Left side, qu questions, comments on this? Okay. Thank you. Um, next slide. Uh, 2252, we're continuing to move forward with uh, uh, the wastewater on 2252. These blocks are our plan sheets. We're going to have a pre construction with the uh, general contractor on the 19th of November and uh, looking at moving, it, moving ahead with the, uh, the projects and uh, uh, finalizing the easements along the route. So uh, that project's moving forward and probably be breaking ground first of the year. Okay. Any questions on the wastewater? Questions, comments on the wastewater program right side. Um, has anybody communicated with the Blackwell property? Their construction is moving along very quickly. Yes, we have. We, we've been in contact with them, and they told us uh, that they already they had their system installed, and we're not interested. So they're going to go with septic? Yes. All right. Yeah, I just thought it would be nice to let them know. We, we, we did early on, and uh, yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Item number 10, City Commission Committee Reports, Recommendations, Possible Actions. We'll start out with the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, since we have met uh, last time, they've had one meeting, and Madam Vice Chair Karen Diaz will be representing the Commission. Yes, Ma good evening. The first item that um, I wanted to give you some information on was uh, filling Place 7 vacancy on the Planning and Zoning Committee or Commission. And um, we had an applicant for this position. His name is Art Porter. Uh, the Commission asked him numerous questions and... Uh, the, the information in your package, you got the recommendation from Planning and Zoning to have uh, Mr. Art Porter uh, fill place seven in Planning and Zoning uh, with a term expiring September 30th, 2022. Do you have any questions? I'll start over on the right side of Planning and Zoning or of uh, Mr. Porter, right side. Man. Impressive resume and uh, we appreciate you offering. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am? No, thank you. No. Yeah, um, we haven't had a chance to talk. I hope we do soon. But thank you very much for stepping up. Uh, we, I've, I've talked to some folks, and I know that you bring a tremendous, and this is not even an exaggeration, tremendous wealth of experience in many projects over many subjects over many years. And uh, we are very fortunate that you're that you're willing to join the team. So thank you very much, and uh, I'm going to leave it up to council on whether or not they're going to they're going to vote you in. So, uh, council, take action on this. Move to approve. Got, second. Got a motion from place three and a second from place one. Any further discussion or questions on uh, filling place seven uh, with Mr. Art Porter? Any further discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? It is unanimous. Mr. Porter, thank you so much. I look forward thank to talking you. to you. And uh, we're, 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 we're look forward to having you. And, and Vice Chair Diaz, the floor is back to you. Thank you. Second item uh, was a petition that was presented by Sean Willis on behalf of Vaquero Grande LLC for rezoning from residence agricultural to uh, neighborhood services B1, a track of land consisting of 4.3 acres, which is on the east side of FM 2252 across from Hickory Bend. The, um, the commission held a public hearing. No one was there or wished to speak. So the commission then took um, 
the opportunity to ask questions and to um, get some information from uh, Mr. Willis. One of the things that um, came to light was that the, the tract of, of land, the 4.23 acres, is currently unplatted. And um, so they will be, ha will have to go forward with that. And they also um, did a conceptual design, a site plan, for um, multi-building mixed use for retail and office professional complex. But this evening, the only thing that council needs to be uh, concerned with is the rezoning request, because the land hasn't been platted, and it, it won't be until after the platting and then submission of what they plan to do at that point. The uh, commission um, was satisfied with the answers and satisfied with the um, fact that their planned use for that tract of land will meet with the um, current multi-use land um, plan and also the proposed multi um, proposed master use plan. So the commission um, recommends that the um, city council, our recommendation unanimous was to um, go ahead and approve that um, track to be rezoned. I do know that um, Sean Willis is here, so I don't know if you want to open it up for um, your public hearing before hearing from him or for questions. Okay, I got it back. Uh, before I open up to public hearing, just uh, say, Council, if you, if you desire, you can hear from Mr. Willis now or we can get the public hearing. I'll give you the option because uh, it may, depending on how you're looking at it, may or may not be necessary to even go through that, but uh, it's your call. So uh, if you would like to hear from the, it, it, and by the way, is the, the actual uh, owner of the petitioner here as well? Yeah, so you could also talk to the owner as well if you'd like, um, or wait till after the public hearing. Um, start on the left side, Any, do you want to bring anybody up now? No. Okay, so that said, I am gonna uh, go ahead and open up the public hearing then. Um, and at, at 6.57, I am opening up public hearing to uh, uh, hear from anyone that would like to speak. And by the way, if you're in here and you wanna speak, you do not have to have signed up. Uh, you'll get two minutes. When if you come up and say your name and uh, address, when you're done speaking, if you would go over to the table that will be as you're facing us to your left and put your name and address on, uh, in the sign-up sheet over there. But, uh, go ahead and do that. And um, if you, by chance, put in any, uh, any uh, written comments, now is the time to decide if you want the written comments to stand or if you want us to take away the written comments and you want to do it uh, verbally here. So that said, does anybody have uh, anything to, to say? Come on up to the, to the little podium, not the big podium that's right here. Anyone? Once, twice, three times. Okay, I have no one, and I'll turn to our Assistant City Secretary. Do we have any written comments that were submitted? No, uh, written comments were submitted to us. Okay. So no one to speak and no written comments. So I'm going to close the public hearing at 6.58. And now that the hearing is closed, I'll turn to council and say uh, you have the package, you have the recommendation, you have access to the, uh, the petitioner's representative as well as the petitioner themselves. Uh, and I would ask you um, if you want any of them to come up and you want to hear from them, just let me know. Start on the left side. It doesn't have to do with the rezoning, so I don't know that it is applicable. It, yeah, please, thank you for saying that. Uh, and, and I think uh, Vice Chair uh, Diaz did a great job of explaining that there's going to be another whole thing when it comes to the platting and everything else. So this is strictly, very strictly, the, uh, the rezoning. Uh, so thank you for saying that. Sir. I have nothing. Sir. We can ask a question in general. If I remember correctly, a couple of years ago, that section right there was purchased by an individual who's going to put up a gas station, a convenience store, and car wash. Is this tract of land any part of that whatsoever? 
No, sir. I believe that was actually further, further was, this way. It was right it there was, in the corner. It was at the corner, and this this tract isn't at the corner. It's a little bit down okay. from the corner. That's kind of what I thought. I just want to hear from yeah. Sean. Does this tract have anything to do with that? That tract at all? Uh, no, sir. The tract is next door. Actually, in the drawing, it's to the right. Okay, very good. That's all I needed. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, ma'am. Okay, so barring any questions uh, from council to the uh, commission, to the petitioner's representative or the petitioner, uh, I'd ask for a motion. I move to approve the request for rezoning based on the fact that it uh, does match our current uh, ordinance. I get a motion from place five for the rezoning, and uh, I got a second from place one. And for the record, this is a motion to uh, rezone from, res from residential ag agriculture uh, to uh, neighborhood service B1, uh, the, the uh, tract of land in section 96 abstract 120 uh, of the Dolson survey in, that's um, filed in Comal County. Okay, so five and one, any further discussion or questions? Left side, right side. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is unanimous, and uh, thank you for being here, uh, petitioner and petitioner's representative. Thank you, uh, Planning and Zoning, for, for making that uh, go smoothly. And I turn back to you for 10 uh, 3 activity report. Well, the only other thing I have for your information is um, the appointment of chair and vice chair for, the per for a period of one year. Um, Dr. Miller and I both expressed our willingness to um, remain in those positions if our commission um, was, uh, was fit to see that. And so uh, the commission did vote unanimously, and so Dr. Miller will remain chair for 2021, and I will remain vice chair. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to take them. Right side, questions on anything for planning and zoning? Thank you for offering. You're all doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Absolutely. Lots That's going all. on. Lots that the city's going to be, has been, and will continue to lean on for planning and zoning. And, and uh, um, thank you so much for stepping up and, and uh, volunteering to stay in the leadership role as well. And we'll pass that on to Dr. Miller as well. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Next up is 10B, Corey Commission. I don't know if we have a commissioner here. Uh, they did not have a meeting since the last time, and we so we have no requirement for any uh, reports. Next is 10C, Water Commission. And they, they don't have anything either. We'll move on to the next. <laughs> uh, welcome Chairman Valdez to the, to the podium. Jesse, the floor is yours. <laughs> well, I, um, as promised last month, I gave you a short meeting last month. I make it up for it this month, taking up two thirds of your packet. So, um, uh, so I'll start off with uh, number one, which is the uh, request for water leak adjustment for 19810 Brandywine Clove for the uh, billing period of June 22nd, 2020 to July 23rd, 2020. Um, after receiving a high water bill, and I, you have the details in your packet, of course, I'll just briefly mention a few things. After receiving the water, high water bill, uh, they inspected the yard and found wa standing water. They, um, they called the city water department, went out there to turn off the water until repairs could be made. They did find the leak, leaks in the irrigation system, but they also found a uh, malfunction in their automatic pool fill system. Um, Anyway, the water department has determined a leak of 206,000 gallons over uh, two billing periods. And the water commission voted four to zero to recommend the water, commission's, water manager's calculation to credit of uh, $2,807.21, which is calculated on the, on the lowest tier rating above the base rate. And here you see the details of the calculations. Now I'll turn it back to you for questions and Decision. Thank you, Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, 
First quick question, is the petitioner in the audience? No. No, sir. Okay. Um, council, this, uh, Chairman Valdez went through it pretty quickly, but I can assure you they didn't go through it very quickly in uh, the Water Commission. They spent a lot of time dissecting what happened, and, and obviously they took it very seriously because it's $2,800. It's one of the larger ones that you've, that you've had put in front of you. But uh, they, they eventually did come to the conclusion and the recommendation that you just received. There's a lot in the package. I can tell you that probably nobody other than possibly Mr. Parsons, nobody else is, is as well versed in this subject as uh, Chairman Valdez is. So if you have any questions, concerns, comments, or anything, now would be a great time to uh, ask him. So start the right side on this water leak adjustment. Questions, comments? So again, you have the recommendation to approve this water leak adjustment and ask for a motion. Move to approve the water leak adjustment for 19810 Brandywine Cove. I have a motion from, from place two to approve the water leak adjustment of uh, $2,807.21 to 19810 Brandywine Cove, and I uh, got a second from place one. Any further discussion or questions, left side? Sure. Okay, uh, barring any further discussion or questions, all in favor of the water leak adjustment for 19810 Brandywine Cove, say aye. Aye. And any opposed? Opposed. I've got place, I'm not gonna do a roll call, but if I say your name and I'm wrong, say something. I got place one, place two, and place four with yes, and place three and five with no, is that correct? Yes. Okay, all right. So it does pass, three to two. And I'll turn the floor back over to you, Chairman Valdez. Okay, uh, our second item on the agenda is um, the water rate structure um, adjustment. And uh, in your packet is a very detailed, you know, information I provided. Um, so what I'm going to do is I going to give you a brief summary of that. I, what I did is uh, kind of um, uh, just kind of hidden some slides, but they're all available there if we need them. Okay. Um, so background, you know, last November went through this a year ago. We uh, the city council approved a 14% water rate increase. And uh, also approved that, you know, our recommendation to do this annually, so we don't have to go through a 14% every every five or six years. Do it kind of gradually. Uh, in January the uh, of 2020, the the rates went into effect actually with the billing uh, date of January 31st. We did use the water uh, and wastewater rate analysis model provided by the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. This is the same model that was used by uh, Water Markets that we hired last year. And it's, just, it's the current model. Uh, just be aware that last year we thought we were going to have to increase rates 16% this year based on the calculations. We're not anywhere close to that. So we'll announce that. Uh, the objective was to do a you know, full cost recovery, you know, revenue stability, be sure we cover our operation and maintenance costs, our debt service, and replenish our reserves. Uh, we want to minimize the impact to low volume users and also encourage water conservation for our higher water users, you know, up in the range of 100,000 gallons. Um, we also need to allow for a plus or minus 15% demand variation due to rainfall. So there's some risk involved in some of our calculations. And that's why we have a wide range of, of assumptions that were made. Uh, we also wanted to change the way we, and have a more of a process, uh, a logical process and pattern to the rates. Right now there wasn't one, one nice pattern to them and I'll cover briefly, but it's detailed in your packet. Basically, the revenue needs to equal expenditures plus what we put in the reserve. Okay, so here's uh, our current structures. You know, for inside and outside city limits, we have the base rate up that includes 5,000 gallons, and then uh, tier rates for every 10,000 gallons after that. Okay. Um, like I mentioned about, there's no logical pattern or process to our local, to our current structure. If you look at the delta between 
you know, the rates, they vary. Just, and if you draw a straight line, you know, you miss some are above, some are below the line, if you look between tier one and tier 10. So um, I came up with an equation, you know, being the engineer, mathematician background that I have, I have to have logic and patterns. So anyway, we came up with an equation for our current rates if you just look between tier one and tier 10. There was one rate that was below the line, there were several above the line. So we use that as a basis for determining the new rates. Okay? Um, one thing about outside sea limits, these rates are not consistent with inside. They're significantly higher. Uh, the base rate is actually the second highest in the area that we have. And we considered that in our process for our recommendation. Okay? So in your packet, this is not in your packet, but in your packet is five slides that detail all these items in there. You know, so I just briefly put into one to minimize the, the presentation here. But our average consumption um, was up uh, 2.4 million gallons per month over the previous year. We also have 27 new accounts since last year. Uh, the assumptions on, on growth rate, uh, projected change for average consumption, uh, model reduction based on you know, rate increases, and then cost growth uh, didn't change from the previous year. We left them all the same. Um, a water fund expenditures, we use exactly what's in the budget. Uh, we have to actually input the budget for fiscal year 2020, and then it calculates 2021. So, and, but guarantee when I look at the numbers, I'll be sure that we were real close to the budget for 2021 in there. Also, you know, we took uh, the reserve. We want to get to what we have in our reserve, our full debt service for the year, plus 12 months. And um, so right now, the proposal based on the calculation is to replenish that in five years. We're below that by 510,000. So the, the, the model has 102,000 per year to replenish that um, reserve. Okay, one of the things that we also had, one of the projects that we talked about in our water commission was looking at commercial rates. Uh, so we looked at the areas around the, the city here and per se there's no commercial rates. What our neighbors have is base rates that are different by meter size and but the tier rates stay the same. Uh, our new meter size, standard size will be three quarter inch going forward for residential use and the larger meters are considered for for commercial use. So we will have inch, we have some inch and a half and we have some two inch meters in the system. So instead of having commercial rates, we're going to the proposal is to have a, a base rate for different size meters. Okay, so here's what we have. Uh, so this chart is based on a base rate, base rate increase of 250. So we'll increase the base rate from 25 to 2750. And then here's what we propose that we have for the one inch, inch and a half and two inch meters. Um, and I looked at all different areas, how they calculated that. They're all over the map. Some are significantly higher than that areas. But basically the two inch is twice the, the base rate for the three quarters. And the other ones are in, in, in between. Uh, I'll point out that there's 10 inch and a half meters in the city and two, eight, and eight two inch meters. We have no large meters in outside uh, city limit service. But we still have it in the system so that in case we ever get outside meters, it'll be in the, in the, in the ordinance already. Okay? So now um, what I want to do is just, you know, have a little bit more, you know, lower impact on the lower, on the lower users and again on the, you know, water and conservation incentive. So what I put together was, or we, this, we recommended between uh, uh, Vice Chair Harshberger and myself is to come up with um, a model that increases the base rate the, the rate for tier one and tier two, X percent or 8% percent I was having here. And then after that, we take the delta and increase it by another percentage. So that way it has more of an exponential curve to it. Uh, and that's the equation we use for determining tier three and the tiers above that. Okay. So I refer to this option as an A slash B percent rate increase. Okay. So we looked at, actually about 36 different options. They were all in six different categories 
and we took one option from each of the categories to present here. So these were presented to um, the Water uh, Commission last week. Before I go into detail about uh, our proposal here and recommendation, I want to show you, uh, well, here's the, well, I have one more slide here. This is a, just the cost, uh, would it be for the different options, depends on various uh, quantities consumption. Uh, it's not have to put every 5,000 gallons like in the past. There was too, too, too much information there, so I thought I'd clean it up a little bit. But you, uh, the, ref, the reference, the, the detail slides are in the, in the reference section of your packet that has every 5,000 gallons. Okay, like I said, I want to show you some benchmark, benchmarking that I did in, around the cities. This is looking at 11 cities in the area. Uh, for base rate, we're, we're second lowest. Okay, so I have these backwards from the normal. I have the lowest on top and the highest at the bottom. Uh, and I also have our average consumption in the city is 17,000 gallons over the 12 month period for 2020. Their average water consumption was 17,000, so I put that in there as well. Again, these are our current rates. Uh, one thing I want to point out is Garden Ridge is the only city that includes water with the base rate. Everybody else in there, I had to add 5,000 dollars worth of 5,000 gallons of water to get this calculation to be able to compare. So some of the base rates are pretty low, but when you add in the 5,000 gallons, they come up higher. Okay, so also I have 50,000 and 100,000. We're a little up uh, lower down the chart as you, as you use more water. One thing to point out is our scale goes up to 95,000 gallons. Every 10,000 gallons up to 95,000. There's one city that at 2,300 stop. It's one rate after 2,300 gallons. Some go up to 50,000, some go up to 20,000. They all vary. We provide a bigger range. And that's why sometimes the, the, our competitors show real close to us in the bottom, but when you, when you get up to the higher usage, they spread out more. Uh, this is the outside water rates. So I put all four of those categories in one because there's only five cities in the area or five water companies in the area that have outside city limit water rates. Um, the average consumption in outside city is actually 9,000 gallons, really on the low side, okay? Very few uh, outside residents uh, use higher than, than 30,000 gallons. Uh, also looked at uh, data from Texas Municipal League uh, this is the 2020 results of their survey. Looked at 574 cities in Texas, and the average reporting was for 10,000 gallons was $65, and we're at 42.33. Now these rates include fees and taxes and everything, so they're a little bit different than the other numbers I'm showing you. When you look at 10,000 gallons, but look at at a how we compare by ranking it statewide, we're 113 out of 574. Cities under 5,000 population, 64 under three, uh, out of six, 365. And then cities in between 2,000 and 5,000 were 19 out of 109. So again, we're all about the top 20% or the lower 20% as far as rates. We're pretty competitive out there. We're on the low side. So I think we're pretty, should be proud of ourselves. Uh, one thing to point out is the water basically costs the same for anybody, any of those users. It's how you run the water company that keeps the rates low. Okay, so that's where, that's where we excel, I think. Okay. So um, the Water um, Commission since spent some time on looking at all different options and everything and came back with recommendation to uh, recommend to City Council option two. Uh, this is using the straight line calculation that has the 3% increase for rate one and two tier one and two, and then a 2% on the exponential. Uh, and no change to the outside ceiling because we want those to come up with, um, get more in line with the inside for future. Now the net revenue, I show, if you don't change anything, will be short, short 77,000. Now the other ones are, we're, we're looking for anywhere around, around you know, $10,000 or so. That's only a small percentage of our whole budget. Option two creates a logical pattern of, from tiers, increases energy, and increases conservation incentive, and begins a process to recognize uh, outside rates. Uh, 
Um, okay, so here would be the, the, the recommendation. As far as base rates, there I have the base rates for different size meters for inside and outside city. Uh, and, and the biometric tier rate structure. Again, when it, was, when it started at the same time we did last year, so recommend this billing period. That way we're exactly a year you know, from, from last time. Uh, here's the financial numbers. Um, looking for 22, F, uh, fiscal year 2022 to 2025. We assume a 3% rate increase to get those numbers in there. But again, we'll look at the end of that next year and, and adjust accordingly. But I want to show this part in how the, the white line is our current rates and the red line is the, the proposed rates for inside city. And you can see the curvature on the to see, but there's a little bit of curvature on the red line as you go up there. Otherwise, it'd be almost parallel. Okay. Um, Hold on, wait a minute, get the, get the right button here. Okay, after, you know, during the meeting, we were talking about different things, and this was an option that, um, uh, alternative option for you to consider. Same as option two, except adds a, a, a 250 rate increase to the base rate for the outside rates. So just an option, for, alternative for you to consider. But again, our recommendation was option two, just an alternative, and the details are in your packet with, uh, with that information, okay? So, uh, Mr. Mayor Thompson, I'll turn it back over to you for any questions and action. Great job, uh, Chairman Valdez. Uh, Council, I have the, the, I've had the benefit of sitting through this now twice, so I understand it. Um, but, uh, and there's a lot here, a lot. Of, but distilled into a couple of simple facts. One is that uh, part of the the system and you know doing the water rate study to begin with and everything was to posture us to be able to have a a uh, program both in terms of you know software program but also program as in programmatics to be able to take a look at this and look at this and be be um, predictable and do this on a routine instead of not doing anything for years as you heard and then all of a sudden realizing that we gotta do quite a bit. So uh, the smart move is to, to, to evaluate this every year and to move forward. The good news is uh, based on the analysis this year versus last year, the, 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 the increase is considerably less than, than we uh, predicted from last year. Uh, the, the health, of the, the, health of, the, of the water company and the water system is, is, is critical to uh, the, the, the city, this plan ensures that we do that. Um, very proud of our system, the reliability. Uh, it's an enviable system in, in, the, in the area. And, and the, the uh, regeneration of equipment, the, the redundancy in, in sourcing and in uh, storage and transmission, uh, is is remarkable and I will tell you definitively uh, is um, enviable by some of my peers in the area as we get together uh, once a month and talk about some of these things. So uh, this is, I, I just can't thank the Water Commission enough for spending all the time on this and com um, uh, Commissioner Harshberger is in the audience and he he uh, has the has the numbers brain as well as very clearly you saw that uh, our chairman has the numbers brain as well. Uh, and we, we could have spent a whole lot of money to do this. And instead we've been blessed with uh, a commission that, that puts this stuff together and then sits as a, as a group and hashes this stuff out, has, has a detailed discussions about it. So, um, but it's ultimately up to y'all. Uh, they have the recommendation before you to go with option number two on that straight line, but um, all the stuff is up for discussion, and if anybody here believes that we should take any other courses, any other any other paths on this, on this, uh, by all means, please say something. Keep in mind also that it's about, you know, uh, Chairman Valdez mentioned paying the bills and and replenishing the reserves. Uh, another thing I'm very proud of, and you should be too, 
because uh, you're the decision makers of this, is that we are investing in our water system in a couple of different ways over the next six months, all without incurring debt. And that's because we have been responsible on both sides of the balance sheet. And uh, we, we intend to continue to do that so we can build the reserves back up and we can do tank renovations and anything else we need to do. Uh, now granted, when we have to tear up a road and uh, tear up roads and do a complete CIP, it's another story, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a little bit more routine, not quite routine, but a little bit more routine of the maintenance of our system. And uh, these folks have done a tremendous job. So uh, that Mayor, said. Mayor Thompson, if, you, if anybody wants an explanation on the other options, I'll be happy to, to yeah, give more details. So, much, yes. So uh, starting over on the near right side, I'm going to mix it up now. So in other words, yes, Sam, you. Uh, and we're going to, if you have questions, comments, you want, uh, you want to, to look into any of these others, this is uh, uh, the opportunity. By, by all means, please. Jesse, you just do such a great job with all of these charts and equations, and you make it, make it easier to understand. It's a lot of information. Um, my biggest concern is really the timing of a water rate increase while we are trying to implement the AMI project. Um, we, do we have a good idea of when these project would an AMI project, um, how that impacts water rates? I know I've read that sometimes it will cause them to go up a little bit, especially with a three quarter meter, which um, reads flows more accurately. The, the three quarter inch meter will pro improve our accuracy at the lower rate. That's why we also have higher rates for larger meters because that uh, accuracy goes down at the lower rates. So, um, but have an idea, you know, I just probably more measure more to to toilet flushes than, than previously, you know, right. I'm sure it'll pick up some as it is, but you know, but uh, yeah, how much impact will be? I think it'd be mi really minor. Okay. Uh, just that's happening at the same time, like you said, is the only issue that it could be attributed to something. Right, I just have concerns about two different variables okay. going on at the same time and people getting a little bit Understand. confused about their bill maybe. You know, why is my rate up here? Uh, you know, I'm wondering if we shouldn't give people an adjustment period with the new, with the new AMI system. That's up to y'all. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> you're right that there could be some adjustment with the meters. Um, we've had some discussions about this, and we don't think it's going to be that significant. And frankly, this water rate adjustment isn't all that significant either. It would have been what we thought we were going to have last year when we looked at this. And yeah, it would have been a big deal, but but certainly not to discount your your concerns, um, commission. Um, or so. You know, uh, actually did discuss that. I don't. Good question. Sir. I think that uh, they learned not to do it in August like we did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're here. <laughs> here, here. Actually, Jesse, I, uh, I enjoyed reading your analyses as a math guy. I know, yeah. It was real interesting. Thank you for your work. Thank you, John. It's starting here. Everybody understand what he said? You grasp, <laughs> you grasp all of this. Um, I'd give the detailed version if you want. <laughs> there's a number of us that have an attitude here on council that when anybody wants our city services that they an attempt to, uh, to be annexed into the city itself, I would much prefer a higher rate outside the city limits. Okay. Yes. To, to help people, or encourage people to uh, to maybe think about that. That's my opinion. About that. Yeah, that's a really interesting discussion that that, that the commission had, um, and uh, you know, it's and, and Chairman Valdez, what's what's interesting about the discussion that y'all had is you did not address that point. Uh, and that's a different perspective, and, and I would say, and I'm not saying it because he's sitting here, but an important perspective. Right. Uh, the incentive to go, hey, you know, there is an advantage to living in the city. What I, what I will tell you, sir, is that what they did talk about is in the 
in the past, we looked at if you were outside the city, well, you know, step back. We had an issue for a long time that it was, we didn't quite carve out all of the expenses as well as we could for the water uh, company. And so you heard me say for a couple of years that, you know, the water company isn't fully loaded, isn't paying for itself. It is now. So strictly speaking, if you, whether you live in the city or outside the city, when you're paying for the water, there's no, there, there's no significant um, second order benefit to it being a city utility as far as if you live in the city or outside the city. If you pay taxes in the city or, or don't pay taxes in the city, there's, your, the taxes aren't going to the water company. Um, now you could argue that there still is a little bit of residual benefit because it's run by the city, but we've done quite a bit to, to remove that uh, and uh, our FM could, could uh, tell you about that as well. But your point is something that is, in, that is, I think, a big deal and is separate and apart from the point of the monetary advantage or disadvantage of, of uh, you know, what it used to be with paying tax and not paying tax. Um, what, one option, uh, an option number five up there that has the um, base rate, I mean, has a look at inside city limits and had 30%. That would have standardized kind of a, is one option there, where it's, everything's 30% higher. That's actually what uh, um, the highest other cities charge. San Antonio, I think, saw is, everybody else is lower than that. But 30% is what one of the options we recommend it. That way, you know, there is a, a straight. What option, Jesse, what option is that? Five. Five, okay. And that one looked at, you know, having, yeah. <laughs> that one looked at having, um, uh, a uniform process between the tiers, you know, for inside and outside. But it did lower the inside, the base rate, though. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor. Um, if, if we bring in additional people from outside the city, there's going to be additional costs to us as far as water lines. There's always something that comes up that is that taken into consideration. Yeah, well, with this? that's water impact fees, those kind of things. Yeah. That we, that, uh, and so yes, and, and we expect and hope it'll happen as we develop uh, on 2252. And yes, that's baked into uh, you know bringing on new customers in 22 on 2252, or frankly anywhere, is the water impact fees that a developer will have to, uh, to to pay the city for that very thing. Okay. Well, we already have one customer now outside the city limits. I would like to see him paying a higher rate. We might have people up north of 3009 and Back Cave Road that are anxious to get on our water system. Those people that aren't in the city, I would like to see them pay a higher rate. So that's my opinion about that. I think we ought to go for something that's not a, a no change for outside the city limits. That's why the options and are still what there. What do you, you recommend, know. Jesse? No, number five? Well, that one will be a 30% for the tier rates, it does bring the base rate down, though, for outside. Okay, what about number four? Number four is the same increase for everybody. So that, uh, it, it puts that, it, it does train out the, the curvature. Now, the outside rate has a bigger curvature. There's a lower second rate, second tier. I mean, tier two versus the line. But the rest of them are a lot higher. But I it's slipped, I slipped into a coma when you started <laughs> talking about curvature. Like Sorry. So, um, but it, it, they follow the same pattern then. <laughs> Let me put it that way. There are some. What does that mean in layman's terms? Well, one of the things about number four is that to get that curvature, to get the same pattern, some of the rates will stay the same in between. So, so uh, I have to, the one that treats everything the same is three, really. Everybody gets a flat three, three and a half percent. So like last year we did a flat 14 percent. It'd be a flat three and a half percent. Okay, let's forget about the, the lines and all this stuff. Yeah, so that's why the... If, if we have a majority of council that would like to see higher rates outside the city, which one would you recommend? Probably four then. Okay. What do you think? Very good. That's all I need. Or you, I mean, saved all the curvature stuff. You think the alternate? So on, uh, on number five, 
Yeah. You increase the outside city rates to 30% above inside, which is the highest of any comparable city, but that requires an increase inside of 4% because our outside rates are so much higher yeah. already. Yeah. See, so yeah, that's the thing in number five. What number five does, notice that inside rates so take a bigger impact. So you don't want to do number five for that reason. You want to get, you want to get the, so yeah, number four, number five would not be a recommended one. So um, I'm going, I think the flat rate of three and a half percent across all, like last year, like we did last year, is, is, is probably the most uniform one. Number three. Well, if I may jump in here, what about uh, or a combination of four? Because if you use if four. they were to use number four, it's all the all that you had in your briefing for in the city is aligned with what your recommendation is. Correct. I need to look at the details for in the city rates. So now the only difference is, is what happens outside the city. Right. And, and, and I, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like, um, okay, the in the city is good, but the outside of the city is the issue. So what if you stay with what you briefed on the outside, or excuse me, inside the city, which as I see it would, you know, four is one of them, and then look at what you do to outside the city. Is that, the, is that reasonable? Exactly. Okay. Or we can do, yeah, yeah. One combination for option, Two for the inside, and option three for the outside. Yeah. A combination of those, yeah. Yeah. Obviously the net revenue and some of the analysis will change a little bit, but it's all, it's all. It's all, po it's all positive. Yeah. Yeah. It's all positive. It's all in the right direction. Yeah. Does that that's, that's answer good. the mail for you? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It's not my intention to increase rates outside the city. It's my intention to get people to think about becoming Under, part of the city garden region. Understand. <coughs> Sir, anything? It's making my eyes water, quite frankly. <laughs> um, I gotta admit, I, I like Councilman Lancey's idea of trying to incentivize people to join the city. It's been one of my concerns for a number of years uh, about growth going on around us. Um, and us getting surrounded. So maybe this is a better way to do that than just asking politely, hey, do you want to join the city? When they say no, go, oh, you sure? <laughs> um, kind of like that idea, to be honest. Uh, outside of that, talk about a lot of work, Jesse, thanks. That's, I, I, I'm still trying to digest it and get it into my brain. Councilman Barb. Uh, yes, you mentioned you have, uh, I believe you said there are eight two-inch meters currently. Could, yes. Could you give me an example of one of them who might have a two-inch? Uh, Northside Bible. Okay. Has actually three of them. Okay. City of, uh, we do here in the, in the, uh, this, this, uh, yeah. Sure. City Hall. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And this, and the, um, uh, residential or the standard three-quarter? Yeah. Okay. There's a, one residential that actually has a two-inch that we found out. Okay. They're, going in, they're going in with a three-quarter. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> okay. Um, and just for clarification, the negative 77 or the loss of 77,000 plus dollars is, it would be what term? What term of one year? Five years? That's a one year. One That's year. A, yeah. An annual loss. Okay. That is an annual. This is the, fr the first year. Right. It gets work. Yeah. That's that's what I figured. Um, yeah. I, what I really like about I like Mr. Lancey's point as well. Um, but what I really like about what you propose is that there's just if a person takes time to read it, it clearly shows that we're going in the right direction. I like the fact that you you're stressing the idea that this is a point A to point B, you know, five year goal. I mean, it's almost like taking out a loan at a bank. You have a, you know, you have you pay it down or whatever like that. You know, your end run is five years from now, and I think that's really, really helpful to the citizens, so that they know that this is how it explains it. And if anyone says, you know, yet another increase, and so on, we voted last year to bump the increase, roughly a month or so from when it was originally proposed, because we didn't want it to fall at Christmas. This way, I believe you said December 20 billing cycle. It'd be, like I said, it'd be exactly a year from the right. previous one. And so for your, I mean, if I were picking it, I would go to 
because that was my intention last year, that it would actually start in January for building in February, but to keep it concurrent with what you're proposing, I mean, it is simpler in, in the long run for you, so. Yeah. I would not delay more than a month past right. that. Right, right. Because otherwise so you get into I'm the saying. I'm just saying for the sake of people getting hit with a, yet another yeah. bill at Christmas, a, an increase especially, but it's a nominal it's, increase. It's also, a, yeah, most people use the base rate, you know, at that right. Christmas time anyway. Right. So I, I, don't, I don't have any issues with what you, I mean, it's remarkable work as usual. So thank you. And Councilman Bauer, um, keep in mind that the number of meters larger than three quarter uh, will most likely increase as we develop more yes. commercial on 2250. No, I, I, so. I really understand that. I was just yeah, that's why it's important that we do it now. Now, that's all. I'm just curious. Yeah. I figured it was like one of the yeah, it's future church. planning. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, re tax over on this side. Lots of things been said since we shall talk. So, um, council. What you have is that first recommendation, which is option two, but then possibly another course of action that's been milled around, which would be a hybrid, if you will, which would be option two for in-city. And uh, Chairman Valdez, what do you recommend for an option outside the city to address the concerns that Councilman Lansing uh, and uh, then Councilman Arvidsson echo? I'm thinking almost three at this point. Without looking at the numbers and looking at the in the at the rates. So two for inside and three for outside. Yes. Um, can we? Um, let me ask Shannon. Hold on. So. Commissioner Hartford, if you want to come on up too, you guys. Were yeah, you have a team yeah, on you have any thoughts? So. Well, it, to do what they're saying, Justin, then just do four. You think four for outside? Four for outside. Yeah, but. Well, because there's no reason to go three and a half. There's no reason to go higher than the inside. But, but tiers four through seven don't change. But if, but if you do the three and two, they'll change because you get the straight line on the outside also. Yeah, but the, the, the current tiers four through seven are lower than, than the, that equation. <laughs> Right, that's why I don't think you want to do the flat or the... That's why you don't, you don't, you're, you're bringing some down, is what I'm saying. Well, but the overall is going up. And no, there's hardly anybody in those upper tiers. Yeah. I don't think I have a big as, a big as impact. Okay. I, I would. Now, isn't four exactly what we're looking for? Yeah, and again, uh, without really looking at the... I don't think I have the plot in the package. Um, Look at them. Um, yeah, so I'm, look, slide 30. Can you call up 31? It's hidden, Shannon. Or that's, oh, wait a minute, what's this one? Oh, yes. Uh, look at 50, 52 then, I think, or 51. On uh, the ones that are hit, oh, just call it up. That's all you gotta do. Just to go to under. Yeah, but um, get out of get out of presentation mode. Because it's a hidden slide. Right there. Then see it's hidden. Just click on it, and maybe the next one. Uh, that's the rates. So then, now go to. Okay, it's actually fifty one then. Try that one, go further down. Try that one. That's inside, the next one then. I forgot I added a number, so. You can see the actual cost. And I think, um, So I can grasp that real quick. Is that better? There's a thousand numbers there. But I mean, you can see that you can look at you can look at option two and option four uh, for the impact. If she goes into presenter mode, will it disappear? No, it'll, it'll stay there as long as she stays there. As long as you don't go into present, switch slides. Okay. So tell us uh, your concern and discussion that the two of you are having between those two options for the outside of the city. Let me, um, 
I think we have a consensus on inside the city. It's just a question of outside. To get the straight line and the exponential, mm -hmm. it goes down. See? You have, to, you have to keep those rates the same. Well, so, so the question for the council is, do you want the rates to go up in every tier outside or just go up in general outside? Because I, one yeah. of the objectives was to rationalize the structure. Yeah. So that's why I think if you're going to raise them, it's like... Right, like what, five? There's, there's no reason to change the model on the inside yeah. and leaving the outside unchanged if we're going to change it at all. But the reason the reason the commission voted for this one yeah. was because they weren't going to change the outside and let it get fixed over time. I know this is a little irregular to do this, but well it's important and I want them to have this figured out. So um, to give you the best options. Now, so we're actually not going to put these into effect until December, we could come back in the next meeting next month if you want to, to relook at all those. Do you want to do that? Is that, I no, think. Well, it, we, have to, we have to advertise this. We have to, uh, do, uh, Ms. Kane, will we have time? Just at the next meeting. Yes. Or what? Huh? I just want to say one quick thing. Well, let's look at them for meeting. When were we, what was the billing period proposal? So, yeah. Okay, uh, so you could adopt rates could prior the to the next billing period, which would be December, th would fall into that January 31st mm -hmm. billing. You could still accomplish accomplish that. So and we'd have 30%. enough time to get, get the word out and advertise it and do all the things we need to do. Uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of tight, but you. I think it might delay this if we do that. Well, uh, well, you still have your. Um, the grapevine that go out in January, you'd be able to give about 30 days notice. Vice Chair uh, Harsberger has a comment. Or less. Go ahead, Chairman Bowden. Uh, well, well, I guess Pardon. we're just trying to clarify what, uh, what the question is. What we're discussing is uh, we, we have the idea that you want to pick an option that will adjust the rates on the outside of the city. But be, because the rates outside the city do not follow any pattern, like option four does what you want to do, but some of the middle tier rates will not go up yeah. because of the way they're not even to start with. So the, the clarifying question we're trying to discuss is if it's the intent of the council to have every tier increase or just to have an overall average increase. You, well, you, and, and, and actually before I ping council on that, I'd say that uh, <clears throat> it seems to me that ideally it would be good if we got it to follow a curve. So if this year is the year that we don't increase all of them and we now have a curve, instead of a step, you know, weird steps of a curve, a ja you know, a zigzag curve, I think uh, that might be a good thing too. Do you, yeah. What's your assessment of that, Commissioner? Well, the, the, the thing is, even if you don't change those middle tier rates, the, the, the actual cost will still go up. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you see the, they're, you know, once they start going up in tier two, they're going to start going up. You know, yeah. at fifty thousand, you're still going up uh, from four thirty three to four twenty to four thirty eight. You so still you, you're still you going you up. See that as a viable alternative. Yeah, I still see that. Yeah, both. Of you? I think yeah. four. Yeah. Okay, so I'll bring it back. Does that meet your expectation of what you were talking about? Yeah, as far as advertising, we already know what this, what inside the city is going to be, so we could advertise that tomorrow because that's not gonna change. So if four fits our needs, then let's, I would suggest. Well, we could just we do it all on that. If, you want, if, if you're willing to, yeah. we could do no, it all. Just, no, no, that's that fine too. That, I mean, whatever, so we'll, some we'll, it'll go certain go hadn't turned into being easy. Well, okay, easy. so we let's review option, uh, option, in essence, option two. Can we go back to the option page? Is this the, no, this alternate? Yeah, go back a couple more, right. Right there, that, that's still the alternate, but right there, uh, further up. More, more, right there, 40. Yeah. Okay, so um, if I understand this correctly, what we're, what we're looking at possibly is option two for inside city limits and option 
Is it option four for outside? Is that well, option four saying? completely. The option four is the same for inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's Thank option you. four. Yeah, option four, flat out. Option yeah. four. Okay. Uh, council, does that, does, first of all, does that meet your. No, option four, yeah. And, and I, I had some agreement on his initial. Councilman Bauer, what do you think? It, are you talking about option four on recommendation option two? Yes? On this page, option four. Yes, I support. Yes, I support. Okay. I support that. Questions, comments on the right side. The left side's been engaged in this for a while. Okay, so that said, um, if anyone would like to ask any more questions about this, make sure you understand it. Or if you would like to make a motion on this, I'll entertain a motion. <clears throat> I move to approve option four recommendation. I have place three with an option, or excuse me, with a motion for option four on the current slide, page 40. Can I get a second? Second. Place four with a second. Any further discussion or questions? Right side far. Uh, no, just a comment that I am comfortable with the rate increase, but I'm still a little bit nervous about the timing. Fair enough. Um, we'll go far. Okay, place three, place four with a motion and a second on option four that you see on this slide right here. Uh, barring any further discussion or questions, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Okay, so I have one, three, four, and five yes, and two no. All right, motion passes. And uh, um, thank you for explaining why. Uh, I appreciate that. And um, Chairman Valdez, thank you and to but also to the entire uh, commission for what you did there. Um, and uh, it's great work, fantastic work. Um, moving on now to 10C3, your activity report. Okay. Um, the commission also discussed uh, two other leak adjustment requests. The commission voted uh, four to zero to recommend to the city administrator to deny both of those requests to the city administrator. So we denied those of those. Uh, other pro uh, water commission projects. Uh, we had a review of Ordinance 50, 61. We had reviewed it back in August, and the edits came back along with comments from city staff as well as uh, city attorney. We went through all those recommendations, and by consensus, uh, commissioners agreed by verbal to do the verbal changes for, for city staff to go ahead and complete, compile all those changes, and then uh, next meeting in November, we'll have a public hearing to... Uh, go over the changes and then bring it back to y'all in the following month. Uh, and uh, Ordinance 54 is still moving on. Had a long discussion on uh, uh, our water leases. Commissioners uh, Haldeman and Dr. Carmichael met with city administrator and the water manager concerning the water leases that are due to expire December 31st of this year. Uh, it was reported that uh, Mr. Franshan would raise the, the annual cost of the leases for, for a 65 acre feet uh, by $100 per acre feet so from 135 to 235. That would raise the total cost from 8,775 to 15,275. That doesn't count. That doesn't include the addition the additional fees we have from the Edwards Walk, uh, Edwards Aquifer, which is another 14,000. Um, then we also have three acre feet that. Um, we had a lease from uh, Dr. Lohman, and that gentleman has not responded back to any answers. So uh, uh, anyway, we'll continue. With that, had discussion that with our changes with our water supply, uh, since the lease has occurred, you know, we have the Trinity now. Uh, Mr. Parsons uh, presented a graph showing water availability versus consumption, and stated that without the leases, uh, we still have more than enough water uh, for quite some time to, uh, to proceed without them. Uh, and then also the subcommittee also pointed out that the new developments that are required to bring to purchase water rights and give them to the city to offset the water needs. So that's that's still we have future coming in. Um, the subcommittee felt that the um, insurance policy provided by the water lease is no longer is warranted, and uh, it was just a temporary insurance anyway. So the commission voted four to zero to recommend to the city administrator not to let the water to let the water leases expire on the 31st of this year. 
Um, another item um, was the chair and vice chair for another year. Um, vice Chair Harshberger and I also, also agreed to continue for another year, and the commission also supported that. So I voted us in again. Nobody was willing to step up and take over. So we'll do that. Our next meeting was uh, Tuesday, November 17th. Again, that's the third Tuesday of the month. We moved it up because of Thanksgiving. So third Tuesday of the month. And uh, that's all from, from me. Back to you, Mr. Mayor Thompson. Thank you, sir. Um, so questions uh, on any of the report that you heard. A lot going on. They've been, uh, they're very active with the analysis of sourcing, uh, that you heard the leases, as well as ordinances, and seeing how the ordinances play into other ordinances is just a, a remarkable uh, set of, uh, of uh, activities and work that they're doing. So on left side, questions or comments for Water Commission? Just thank you. <laughs> um, before before I, uh, I let you let you off the hook, um, I'm going to throw out a mea, mea culpa. Um, two people and 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 mea culpa is I should I didn't pick up on it until I moved on, but uh, two two uh, council members voted no on the leak adjustment, and um, I'm going to ask if you want to take the opportunity to explain why. And the reason why is because it's feedback for the commission that works really hard on trying to make sure that they're staying consistent, that they're providing uh, solid advice, and it would be useful if you have a, and you don't have to, but if you have a reason for why you said no, it would be, it might be useful for them. So I'll, I'll uh, go, we had two people vote no, so place three, Councilman uh, Lanzi, do you have anything you'd like to offer up? Uh, just that um, it's the dollar amount that we keep giving away. Um, I know when we get the new, these new meters and, and a way to read them, all that stuff, this is going to be brought to a, a, probably a screeching halt. We, I hope so. The uh, homeowners won't have to pay these. Uh, at the end of the month, realize that they've had a problem for 30 days. Uh, it's unfortunate they do. I don't, I don't want to be in that position, so I feel like I should be approving this, but I just can't in all instances when it's their fault, just throw that money back where that water went. I understand. Fair enough, thank you, sir. And Councilwoman Bauer, opportunity as well. Essentially the same thing as, as Mr. Lancey, Lancey said. Um, okay, thank you. Fair enough. Thank you. Great work. Uh, sure. Thank you so much. Okay, moving on to item 10D, Wildlife Management Advisory Commission. Uh, I don't see the chair, nor do I see the vice chair. Neither one of them are here. Um, they had a meeting, but they had no action to bring to council. Do we have any report from them to pass on? There was not necessarily any recommendations that the commission uh, was going to bring forward to the uh, city council. They did uh, reappoint uh, David Krasinski as chair and Ken Kniper as their vice chair. Okay, and uh, in the public meeting, if you, have, uh, if you have any business for them, now's a good time and we'll relay it. So right side, any questions that you want us to relay, comments that you want us to relay to that commission? Yes, I would like to know if they have been able to come up with any land to trap on. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, pass that. We'll ask on. that. And anything, ma'am? Okay, great, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kane. Moving on to You're item welcome. 10E, Parks Committee. Mr. Chamberlain, welcome, floor's yours. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to address you about the Parks Committee. Uh, our last general membership meeting was held on October 14th. We did have a guest representative uh, from the Wildlife Management Advisory uh, uh, Commission, and we decided that we would start sharing information across the board to get better in sync with what we're doing as, as a commission and also as the committee from that point. Our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, November the 11th, which is next Wednesday. Uh, an update on a previous status from an uh, open item that we had a couple months back is review of ordinance number 24, 
rent all the facilities at Paul Davis Park. Uh, this city ordinance has been reviewed and draft edits have been entered. And a copy uh, just before this meeting was emailed over to the city administrator. It's our hopes so on the next step is to coordinate and schedule a review meeting with the city administrator so we can discuss it in a more timely manner. Uh, we appreciate the high level support we continue to receive from the city hall and also its associated departments. So to all of you, thanks for your support big time. It's been very helpful. Uh, as far as what we've accomplished over the last uh, meeting, uh, pavilion number three, uh, there was a, uh, can't you have a slide? So that's, that's kind of what we've been working on. Uh, not kind of, that actually is. That's pavilion three with the uh, new landscape that's coming to play. Uh, there used to be two 40 plus foot trees that were damaged that were cut down and removed. Uh, we also added in two uh, new chinkapin oak trees were planted. Uh, landscaping areas have been graded to minimize uh, potential rain off of water and also top dressed using native mulch from within the, uh, the parks area so we didn't have to spend any money on mulch. Uh, decorative grass was also installed uh, along with the front path to the pavilion. Uh, when ordinance number 24 is approved, it will include a new rental option for pavilion number three from that area. Uh, so that should be the, that's the front. Then uh, if you slide down, there should be then a side view of it from that area. Um, and we've gotten some very good comments from uh, people who have been out walking their dogs or just or joggers and that from that area. So we're, we're pretty proud of that and hope you are too. Uh, with regards to the metal, uh, the Meadows, uh, at the sep September Council meeting, you approved the Eagle Scout project uh, for an arbor and two benches, which was presented by a scout, uh, Alex Webster. He has successfully completed that project on October 31st. Uh, if you go to the second slide, uh, that actually is a new arbor that's come up, and you may notice that, it's, that our grass is shiny that's underneath it. <laughs> no, that's because we had a water leak that uh, actually the water department responded to it within a matter of a couple of minutes after I had contacted Shannon. So that's been fixed and everything else, but uh, the arbor looks really nice. There is a second bench that's off to the side uh, from that area. Uh, but we would like to go ahead and thank uh, Scott Webster for his contribution to our city parks and uh, wish and encourage him uh, the best as he continues to work towards his, uh, his Eagle Scout uh, designation. And that's, that's quite an accomplishment from that area. Uh, also in preparation of next year, if you go back to the previous slide, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the other photo just before it had the, there you go, yeah. Uh, there we've installed the, uh, the uh, timbers along with the uh, rope fence that came into play, but we've also gone in prepared for next year's spring bloom of native wildflowers. The metal was reseeded and covered with hay to provide a warm winter blanket for the flowers that are there. We still need to properly secure the new rope fence around uh, the metal itself. On the, that's it for the photos, thank you very much. Uh, the back section, we continue to work on respreading uh, re the mulch and marking the proposed nature tr and walking trail throughout the park. Uh, the baseball field, we did go ahead and have Players' Choice dirt uh, delivered in preparation of resurfacing the infield. And uh, we also will be putting in new bases as well, hopefully this month. Uh, and we replaced a dead tree along the backstop area with a new eight foot elm tree. Pavilion number one area, we installed a larger boulders along the parking lot side of pavilion one, and we performed general landscaping, including uh, duties around the pavilion, and installed a new elm tree along the service road going into the, uh, the back park area. In playground number one, we installed a new uh, ligustrum tree, which I know you all know about that, right? Uh, which uh, over time will hopefully provide a lot of shade for the kids. Uh, what are we looking to do over the next 30 to 60 days? Uh, actually, this coming Saturday is Texas Arbor Day, uh, and we will be at Paul Davis Park doing cleanup and uh, continuing to enhance the park itself from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, you had approved that last month, and uh, we appreciate that, and we definitely are hitting, staying below the numbers that we forecasted for attendance and still be able to accomplish our jobs and be uh, COVID compliant. Pavilion 3 will expand the landscaping around the stationary grill. Uh, ordinance number 24, hoping to have our first review with uh, the city administrator and team. Uh, we're gonna replace the old dog uh, waste station and hopefully get uh, the dirt spread out and cut on the baseball infield. 
the other parks will have new signage going up for Eagle Scout Park and for Regency Oaks. Uh, the community center and we will have well, hopefully the Christmas tree lighting event which we'll talk about later with you and continue working on our 2021 planning that comes into play. Uh, with regards to our open task, uh, the Parks Committee leadership team continues to work with Public Works uh, on a coordination of the priorities of the open task and pending tasks that we have. Uh, year to date, we have 135 tasks that have been created. That's up one from last month. Uh, we did make a big increase with regards to closed activities. Uh, we actually have 68 closed or 62%. Uh, before last month, it was 51 total we have 53 or 39 percent of the tasks are still actively being worked as we talk from that area um, and I'd like to if I can make a public request uh, to the people in our community uh, the parks committee is looking for new members uh, always looking for new members but if you enjoy working outside or you know someone who likes working outside and wants to meet the people who are helping our city go going towards the future uh, please have them reach out to us either by going to the city website under the parks uh, department section or go ahead and email us at gardenridgeparks with an s at gmail.com uh, we look forward to hearing from them and uh mayor i'd like to turn it back over to you for any questions wow fantastic um yeah the, the paul davis park is looking fantastic the, the pavilions uh, now we can uh, start to to uh, book um book pavilion number three thanks to the, the great work that y'all did out there um i will talk it up and i hope uh everyone up here will talk up getting more people on the parks committee but y'all are just knocking it out of the park quick question before i turn it over to council where are you meeting on the 11th uh blue bonnet room okay because city offices are closed on the 11th you knew that right uh, yes okay <coughs> so you've already already, you've already booked already and con that. confirmed yeah okay so starting over on far left any questions comments for parks for me nope pretty much rod keeps me in the loop if you got any more projects i've got more scouts uh we we will be contacting you <laughs> thank you I, I appreciate the support it's been great Excellent. we actually have another one in the hopper that's coming up here hopefully next next month Yes, I was uh, out there a couple weeks ago, and you got a really nice path going up to Pavilion Number Three. Are you going to extend that much further? Uh, we are. We're hoping to have. Um, that's actually up, up for debate uh, as we're getting feedback from the citizens and also people within the community that are uh, either visitors. Actually, there's a lot of visitors that come out of city because they feel that Paul Davis Park is, is a diamond in the rough, uh, which has really been amazing. I'd say probably 25% of the people I talk to don't live in the city and are like in shirts or Selma or something like that, and they come all the way over here just because they like the uh, facilities that we offer. Uh, but it's our intention to go ahead and finish the, the trail all the way around, so roughly close to just under a mile of a uh, trail will go in uh, we're still debating over what type of material we want to use because we have walkers, joggers, people in wheelchairs, and also strollers. So we want to be accommodating to all, all aspects if possible from that area. Yeah. Again, thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you very you. much. Okay, moving on to item 10F, Volunteer Garden Ridge. Dr. Miller's not with us, but um, Ms. Kane, City Administrator, has got some numbers for us.
Okay, I'm not sure she was, her mic was actually on. So um, it was 134 from library, 141 parks, 57 and a half from uh, Eagle Scout Project for a total of 342.5 hours uh, volunteer, which is pretty remarkable considering that, you know, we're doing all we're doing with the pandemic. Um, but so, so uh, thank you to all the volunteers. This city is, uh, the, you know, the foundation of the city is volunteers and and uh, still, in, in spite of all that's going on, still people are coming out, and I know we're going to have a lot of people out there on Saturday as well. So, so thank you. Moving on, item number eleven: approvals, authorizations. <clears throat> Following items up for discussion. First one is COVID in item eleven A, and uh, just some quick updates. No change in Texas with the status of the uh, emergency declaration. Probably will be updated again within the next couple of days they work it to about 29 to 30 days or so uh, we expect that to be updated the executive orders that uh, we talked about last time that happened all the way back in September middle of September are still in force uh, 30 and 31 so really nothing has changed as of this afternoon I've, I've checked into it again um, and then uh, the only thing is that there's been a few quote hot spots uh, and you may know that some people have been brought from El Paso over to San Antonio uh, to, to uh, uh, take advantage of the health care in San Antonio because uh, El Paso was getting a little busy. But that, that's, uh, that's about it for, for the state, for the county. Nothing at all new. Um, there's uh, uh, um, reports that come out every couple hours from the county, uh, and, uh, but nothing, nothing new, same, same stuff, different day. Uh, and in, in the city, our 227 is still in force and will be as long as Texas keeps re-upping the emergency declaration. You heard from library, you heard what we're doing with city hall, uh, you've heard in the various departments what they're doing to, uh, to um, uh, keep things moving. Uh, we're having more meetings in the Wildflower Room and we're getting more bookings uh, out, at the, out at the park. I, uh, since the last time we met, I, author I had five more authorizations, uh, you know, per the governor's order. I did five more authorizations. Uh, with Trunk or Treat was actually one of the authorizations. The market at Garden Ridge is another one. And then three individuals that did, have done some, uh, are, are doing some stuff out of the park. Um, the, uh, the folks that have put in their requests have done a great job of ensuring that they know what I's dotted what I's need to be dotted and what T's need to be crossed. So, so appreciate that, and, and our our citizens are paying attention. And it's a good it's a good thing. Um, and just wanted to want to I I, I want to highlight that as you heard from the different departments about what's going on with COVID uh, precautions and and uh, procedures uh, and, and all that. It's it's. It's something that uh, your city staff leadership is taking very seriously. And it's not just for the obvious, whoa, we don't want anybody to get COVID. Yeah, I get it, and we all get it. But it's also because we're very, they are very tuned into the operational necessity of it. Um, you know, and the chances are somebody gets exposed to somebody that has COVID, they come in here, their department, if they're lax and they're all, in close proximity and all that stuff, then the next thing you know, the entire department has to go home. Uh, so they are all very tuned into that that kind of thing could severely hamper uh, their department and our city's ability to provide services to the citizens. So that's the reason why they're still very focused and keeping their people focused on the separation, you know, chronological and, and separation uh, physically and masking and all the things that, uh, that we're still keeping keeping uh, um, a focus and an emphasis on. So just to let you know that they're doing a great job of keeping keeping that going. So we can keep the services going. Next is, uh, um, well, first of all, does anybody have any questions on any of that or any comments on, on the state of play with COVID, state, county, and Garden Ranch? Right side. No. Okay, next is funding and expenditures from uh, the uh, Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, and I'll turn to RFM for that. 
Um, so we have received the remainder of the funds from the state allocated CARES uh, Act that was allocated to specifically to our city. So the total amount that we have received in-house at this point is $226,655. That is all that has been allocated to us. So I am now going to close the project out with the state and uh, we're done. And uh, a fantastic job of that. And as you're going around, you should see that we're enhancing the facilities be it here, be it the park, be it the community event center, touchless, uh, faucets, toilets, those kinds of things. And we're still in the middle of that process. Um, and and uh, Mr. Steinmetz, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, we're still looking at, um, looking at automatic front doors for the community center and the city hall and some extra touchless features for the library doors. Um, as I mentioned before, we're looking into water softeners also to protect all the investment that we're gonna be putting into the uh, plumbing fixtures in the buildings. Um, we have several uh, quotes for some of these things. We're just looking at our best uh, options right now for which ones we wanna put all of our money into. Fantastic. So left side questions for either FM or for Public Works when it comes to the coronavirus aid, money and projects. No, oh, just kudos again for putting all of that for us at the bottom, you know, on your part. Sorry. Next is item uh, 11A3, possible action on, uh, on any actions that you would that you would like to take on in the context of uh, COVID-19 but one is also to give you the update on the Christmas tree lighting event so I'll ask Mr. Chamberlain to come back up uh, recall that we brought it to you last time and you gave consensus on them moving forward with the plan so now the plan is closer I'm going to do the mea culpa for him that he it's not all nailed down because there's some coordination and some things that he's waiting for from some people. Uh, but he still does have quite a bit of time. And in fact, you, he'll be able to give you an update before the meeting, um, excuse me, before the event at the next meeting, but it'll, be a, it'll only be a matter of a couple of days before the, before the event. So that's why he's gonna give it to you now. So, okay. sir, floor is yours. Thank you. Appreciate you coming back up again. Uh, during last month's city council meeting, once again, we talked about I introduced the concept that the Parks Committee would like to do the Christmas tree lighting uh, this year on December the 4th. Um, I also indicated that we had some concerns surrounding traffic flow for the event and also ensuring that we were effectively managing COVID uh, to everyone's satisfaction from that side. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that we did make significant headway um, thanks to the help actually of several people on the council uh, to help and steer me in the right direction to contact people. Uh, on all fronts, and the Parks Committee is here today, once again, seeking your consensus for us to host the event uh, in December 4th. Uh, the three main obstacles that we ran into, one was with regards to traffic flow. Uh, and if you look at the map or the drawing that's in front of you, uh, this was a rendition based upon a conversation that the Parks Committee had with the city administrator and with the chief of police. Uh, what would be the best way to handle a drive-through Christmas tree lighting event. And the arrows in green are what you're seeing, what we proposed. Uh, that meant that we need to get access to the elementary school area. Uh, they have given us authorization for it. We still have to coordinate a few things, but they have said, yes, we definitely want to support you. Uh, they were pretty enthusiastic about wanting to make sure that it, we got everything taken care of properly. Uh, I'll begin to go with city administrator and also with the chief to go ahead and finalize how we're going to manage the navigation of the cars and everything else. But basically, you'll come in through Municipal Parkway, make a left-hand turn, go into the Garden Ridge Elementary School area, go around the back of the school, come back up, and depend upon what time you show up, you will eventually end up getting to the exit of the horseshoe drive through for the community center. You'll come up the exit and then exit out on the entrance side.
from Madrid. That's the, how the pattern of traffic will go. Uh, the chiefs assured me that uh, no problem, we should be able to do this very effectively from that side. Uh, the key thing to understand is this is a drive-through. That means that the car that you come in is the car you stay in and it's the car you leave in. That's the only requirement that we have in order to go ahead and attend from that point. So there will be no walking around or touchy-feely or anything along that side that comes into play. The second challenge was, gee, could we have some people come out with their Christmas cheer? Well, the Danville Darlings went ahead and actually approached us and said, we'd like to participate. Are you going to do something? And we said, yes, we'd love to have you. So we went through a complete review of the COVID requirements that they, they asked that we make sure that they would, would comply with. The answer was yes on that side. So the Danville Darlings will be attending. Uh, they will be performing. Uh, and it will be according to public health standards with COVID as we go into play. And I'll talk about that more in just a second. The third one, though, was the most important one. This required a tremendous amount of work with the U.S. Postal Service and also with Rudolph. And we have special compensation given to us that Santa will be here on December the 4th. So now that we've got this taken care of, we think that we're in a good position to go forward. So that's what we're looking for. Those were the three big obstacles we had to work through. So with that come into play, we're looking at drive through only. We're looking to have an FM broadcast. We will have a Christmas tree lighting. We will also go ahead and hand out Christmas candy. We'll show you about that in a second. We also will handle the raffle tickets. And we also will give them a chance to see Santa Claus and wave and say hello to him. And he can say Merry Christmas back to him as well from that side. And we will have the dancing dar uh, the Danville Darlings going ahead and performing as well from that area. Um, the main thing is, if you look at your slide, that's the first slide is the main over route. If you go to the next slide, that's the detailed drawing. It is not to proportion. I am not an artist, and I don't know how to draw curves on an Excel spreadsheet. So um, that was my best shot at it. <laughs> um, so uh, basically, though, I think the next slide is really what you want, which is kind of showing you exactly what we're looking to. So if you can go to the next slide up, that's just giving you a blow up of it. Basically, um, once the vehicles are into the procession, if you would, uh, they will be staying in their cars. We will have the proper uh, support from the police and hopefully GRCPAA get to be determined. Uh, but basically, they will come up to the exit for the community center uh, in a single file as they continue to come up through, make the turn that you're seeing as number two. Uh, they will now be approached with number three. Number three is where we actually will go ahead and pick up any letters from for Santa. And they will go into the Santa's mailbox because the library is gonna let us use their mailbox for that special event from that area. And I thank you, Linda, for that. Appreciate it. Uh, as they go forward a little bit further, they will then see the red number four. I hope that my, my site is right. That will be Santa uh, sitting on his throne uh, with a Christmas tree behind him and presents all around him from that side. Um, they will also, on the, on the passenger side, they will be able to see the, the Danville uh, Darlings going ahead and performing. Uh, they will be actually in their own section. Uh, so they will be basically, if you would, not quarantined, but they will be roped off from that area. So they will stay by themselves from that point. Uh, as you continue to go uh, forward again, you'll hit uh, area number six. That's where they actually will be able to pick up their candy. Uh, the candy will actually be prepared three or four days ahead of time. It'll be then wrapped, stored, no one will touch it and then we'll be wearing gloves and we will then hand the bag to them uh, at that point to the kids that are in the, uh, in the car uh, or the parents if they also want some candy. Um, as they turn the corner on six going towards seven, uh, there will be raffle tickets. Raffle tickets will be there uh, to give them strictly, very simple, how many kids in the car, how many adults in the car. Kids will get one color, adults will get another color. Now the question may be, well, how are you going to hold the raffle? Very simple. We're going to give them raffles that have numbers on them. 
those ticket numbers were then going to post on the city website who the winners are. And if they want to pick up their gift, then they will come down to City Hall and City Hall will have it there for them. No ticky, no washi, no gift. So they have to have their ticket when they come from that area. So we should be able to handle that very effectively because our main concern is to make sure we have the traffic moving out in a smooth and orderly fashion as we go forward with it. If you look over at number seven, you'll see where there's the panel for the actual lighting of the Christmas trees. We also will have an MC that will actually be able to broadcast over an FM radio station. So as people are in their car, they'll be able to hear the music that's being played and any of the activities that are going on for, uh, for the event itself. Um, and that is pretty much it. As they go down towards number 10, they'll make a left-hand turn and they will then exit out towards 3009. Um, uh, pardon? They make a left turn. Left turn, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, left turn. Yeah, right turn won't work. Great, wonderful plan. Okay. Um, again, some details that uh, they're still working on, uh, and they do have some time. So right before this event, they'll be able to fill you in on it, but now this is the, the point of making sure that, Council, you're still good with this. If you have any concerns or questions, now would be a, a wonderful time to articulate those. So starting over on the far right if you if you have anything please ask uh, Campbell. Sir. Sir. Ma yes as he said um, of course we do have some additional details which we will share but I would want to give thanks to uh, Chief Everhart for proposing the reversal of the lane because that made so much more sense yep. so that the flow is much more it expedites it so much better and they can leave in other words don't they don't stay so there's no lingering and so on so I, I just want to be sure everybody knew that, that was a consideration. And, and as you said, we will have a vocalist, which is a really wonderful thing. And just a number of other little details and some, some additions to the family. So, thank you. No. The deer population is going up. The deer population is increasing. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. no. um, okay, so that said, uh, get, if you're okay with this, I'd like to ask for your consensus for them to, to go ahead and move forward with this. Uh, and again, like I said, you'll get one, an update right prior, prior. So consensus? Consensus? Fantastic Super. job. Thank you. Uh, and, you know, uh, and anything we can do to help, anything I can personally do to help, please let me know. Okay. Uh, and we got, we got, we got some, a little bit of work to do here and there, but it's, I look forward to it. It'll be fun. Super. It's Thank you. It's going to be great. Appreciate the support. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Moving on to item number 12, City Administrator Reports. Turn it over to Ms. Kane. Okay, um, I want to begin my report out by letting Council know that we will be having an employee volunteer City Council Christmas party on December the 11th. Uh, it will be at the Community and Events Center. Uh, there we are working uh, to provide a very safe and fun event, and more information will be coming out in the very near future. Okay, and ma'am, uh, well, actually, go around questions or comments on that. You're welcome. Uh, and next, go ahead and continue with uh, item 12A1. I am going to ask uh, Mr. Steinmetz to provide an update on the Oak Wilt um, event that we have in the city. Um, the prep work for the Oak Wilt containment has started. Lines are being located at Paul Davis Park, Sumac Cove, and on private properties involved. Uh, the locating of the utility lines and sprinklers have slowed up the progress a little bit because we've been counting encountering limestone we dig maybe about 12 inches and the rest will be limestone we have to go at least minimum 48 inches down um, we should have some pictures up of uh, some of the progress um, there's Stanley standing in the trench we dig for the uh, Paul Davis Park right by the uh, barbecue uh, uh, barbecue hut so 
that took a little while. Uh, this is the private property um, where the uh, crew from We Love Trees are having to hand dig those out so they don't do any damage to uh, the sprinkler systems in her yard. Um, there's a, another hand dug gas line in the same property. Um, that's the electric line, I believe, right there. Um, one of the one of the yards is right now getting the entire length of their yard hand dug just so they uh, so they can locate the sprinkler lines. And otherwise, they they were to go straight through with that trencher and they were to hit a sprinkler line. You know how how sprinkler lines are. If there's a control valve associated, there's going to be wires associated with that, and that big wheel will just rip every wire out of that increase the cost so that's why the hand digging is going on um we did get the uh the uh time limit from the state moved out because we we're when we saw that we we're being slowed up by the uh the limestone uh, i called mr edmondson out up and he got an extension up to february but uh we love tree said we should be totally completely done with it by the 13th of november uh, and we still have, uh, and that still leaves us the uh, $3,000 will still be available for us that got granted to us from the state. That's all I have. A lot of, a lot of work to stay on this and we really appreciate it. Starting over on the left side, questions or comments for Mr. Steinman? No, thank you. Thank you so much for staying on this. It's obviously you. critical to the rest of the city. Um, next up is 12B City Council Projects. First one is the new resident package. It was mentioned uh, at the last council meeting, so <laughs> you weren't here. <laughs> but uh, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to put it back on and see uh, where we are with it and if there's anything that y'all need or any of that. So I'll uh, kind of go, who wants to talk? By the way, I'm sure I did. So. <laughs> Did you hear that? She said she knows it was your idea because she watched uh -huh. it. Yeah, well, I've got her, I've got her home number. So. <laughs> I personally, just first of all, I'm not sure. I guess we talked about this a year or so ago, and Ms. Balby has offered to help in any way she can. With, and she's given us feedback as far as what the citizens are looking for when they come forward as new citizens. And yes, if I'd known that this would trigger this, I, wouldn't, I would have kept my mouth shut last month. But... Uh, I don't personally think I can do anything on this anytime soon. With the parks and the planning and zoning and council, just realistically don't think I can get anything done on this. Fair enough. Ma'am? I should start by thanking Kay. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm still just not, I'm still not entirely sold on the idea. I'm not sure if it's something that we really need to do. Um, you know, most people go online to look for information. You know, we're not passing around papers as much anymore either. I mean, Kat, what kind of stuff do people ask for that we're, we're missing? I know Kay was talking about flagpole ordinances and... Um, honestly, most residents just want to know when their um, garbage and recycling dates are. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, and that's actually already included one in the physical packet and then Lately, um, due to COVID, many um, new residents sign up through email. So we just email all of this information to them electronically. Um, and none of them ever really contact us back with any questions or additions. Well, it's, first of all, it's a good thing that we're electronically emailing them. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one of the youngest people on staff never misses the opportunity to catch me saying things like that. So, um, but uh, your, your, your point's a, a good point, but I would counter that they don't know what they don't know. So th there's things they wouldn't be able to ask because they wouldn't know. Uh, and and I, I would just say that putting information together for a new resident doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a physical book. Or booklet it could be here's an address to go to and it welcome the garden is and here's the things you should know and here's some places to look read on this stuff or links or whatever it happens to be but still putting it into uh, uh, a compendium of 
welcome and this things and it could be you know nowadays you can buy a, a, a USB drive for less than a can of coke so I mean you know you can you, we could do that too we could load it and when they come in we hand them we hand them that and and uh, and and then maybe print a couple for the person that says what's this <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. but um, I, I get it. A lot going on. Maybe uh, maybe we can revisit this in a in, in a couple of months. Um, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, or maybe the fellows should take a shot at this. I mean, I think Todd and, and Brian would just love to work on this project. I have no desire. <laughs> <laughs> I actually ha do have an idea that. Unrelated, it's not passing the buck, I promise. But have we considered reaching out to some of our very talented citizens who'd like to get involved that maybe have an expertise in this area? Yeah, and, um, you know, they could create absolutely. Yeah, uh, it'd be something that let's talk about that. Uh, cat, we'll put something out there and see if we can tap into somebody that might have some expertise on it. Yes, sir. And if not, we'll put it on the agenda for next time so we can talk about it again. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay, um, so any other comments on this, on this subject before I move on? No, thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, anything? Okay. Um, next is 12B2, which is Wildlife Management Issues Concerns. This was put on uh, by Councilman Lanzi and echoed uh, and uh, reinforced by Mayor Pro Tem McCaw. Uh, the idea here being that we um, have had some issues with finding places to trap because of comments uh, made by people that have either uh, allowed us to trap on their land before or uh, have not allowed any trapping because of um, pressure from, from other citizens. And so the question was, what do we have on that? So we put it on the agenda. Uh, and first of all, I'll, I'll ask Councilman Lansing, did I did I accurately uh, convey what your what your concern was? Okay, do you have anything you want to add to that? Because we do have a few things we may be able to offer. Um, well, it was mentioned last month about some issues, people getting not not necessarily threatened, but intimidated for letting us use their land to trap things like that caught me off guard. I knew nothing about that other than what took place about four or five years ago when we first started our trapping. Um, has anything happened recently that I should be aware of? Well, and, and we have a plan. I just want to make okay. sure that's what you, um, so you were part of this as well. Do you have anything to add to that before we give you what we have? Uh, no, I just uh, have noticed an increase in Actually, most of the increase I've noticed is dead deer on the side of the road. I've seen more this year than uh, on Bat Cave than I have in the past. And uh, last month I saw 15 deer on my front yard. I didn't want my grandkids to walk after them. Um, so, actually, you have the most recent number, and and you're not on mic, so say it and I'll repeat it. 22. 22, an increase uh, this this past month, right, was 22, which was an increase of how much? Uh, the previous month it was eight, and then it went to 22. So yeah, it has increased. Ruts coming, you know, that kind of thing too. But what I'd like to do is now, as I'm going to hand it over to our city administrator, she, you know, the problem with this is, and I'll just preface this by saying that a lot of the information becomes bit anecdotal because it's people talking to us uh, when we're asking hey can we can we trap on your land or whatever where they just they tell us and it's not in writing uh, and it's so it's, it's somewhat anecdotal but the undeniable part of this is look at our success rate in getting a place to trap you know so you can see that that the anecdotal information clearly supports the the result so that said I'm, I'm going to turn the floor over to, to Ms. Kane.
Okay, I think I'm on now. My experience uh, in contacting residents uh, concerning the possibility of them letting us trap deer on their property, their private property, I pick up the phone and I call them or I talk to them in person. Um, responses that I have received have been, no, I don't want to upset my neighbors, my friends, or my family. That has been my experience with uh, trying to get properties located. Um, I know Chief has assisted me with that uh, several times as well. And do you want to yes, call and, and, uh, and the fact is, is, Chief has actually been in the middle of this more mm -hmm. than anyone else. And the Chief does have uh, some documentation and he has received some things in writing, but he also has kept notes when he's talked to people. So we're gonna hand it over to the Chief now so he can give you what he knows and what he's got. Chief. Thank you. So let's go back to the beginning and let's discuss this. And when the program started in 2016, uh, it was, it was um, not received well by some in the community. And it, it was shortly after the program started that a campaign seemed to have started where some of our residents had their pictures of their houses with the nets up posted online on social media sites with people asking uh, other residents to give them a hard time, contact their mortgage companies, contact their insurance companies, and try to get all this stopped and get it removed. That, um, that took place and then escalated to where in January of 2017, we had several documented incidences. We had, a, uh, we had received some information about a, a protest that was gonna take place during some of the trapping. We did have some residents show up at one of the trap sites in January that uh, one resident showed up, saw some animals there, made a phone call, some more residents showed up nearby uh, to the point they contacted the property owner, tried to get the property owner to rescind his permission to have the net there. Uh, that didn't work. Uh, that was all documented. That same evening, uh, a member of that group was out conducting some activities near another trap site in which that property owner confronted him, talked to him. There was an initial accusation of a weapon being pulled. We were not able to, um, that, that individual decided not to prosecute with any criminal charges when after discussions were had about what would happen and how that process would, would undergo. Both of those incidents were the same evening in January 17. I sent a memo to all of y'all at that time. And, and at that time, everything was suspended uh, for that season and nets were removed and everything was stopped. Later that year, uh, well, actually toward the end of 16 also, we had uh, one resident come to us with some information about emails he had received that seemed to be threatening in manner. We initiated a report on that. Uh, that resident decided not to, to pursue criminal charges at the time, hoping that things would work itself out. Uh, we were provided some emails at that time uh, and, and to go along with that documentation. And, and so then everything in January 17 pretty much came to a halt. The program continued later. Uh, in March of 19, we, uh, we had an incident with one of our new, with, with the new trapping company in which he called and notified us that a, an individual was interfering with one of the traps, scaring animals out of the trap he was watching on camera. We able to go out there and, and locate this individual, which was another resident. Um, that person was warned and told that if they interfered again, charges would be filed. Within a couple of days, somebody had thrown smoke bombs on this property uh, to deter the animals out of the traps. And after, the, after that happened, then that property owner uh, 
in regards to that, decided he wanted to protect his property and didn't want this, this harassment anymore. So he asked us to remove that trap. Around that same time frame, another trap that was up, uh, the owner of that property contacted the, the trapper and requested that trap be removed because he was receiving tension and, and aggravation from his neighbors uh, in that area. So he had requested that that trap be removed. So those are the, the highlights of what has happened. And there have been numerous other conversations and people that have spoke up about they don't want to get involved because of all the, the rhetoric and issues that are being posted on social media sites and and uh, so forth. But we don't, we don't document all those unless there's a criminal offense and somebody comes directly to us. Chief, thank you very much. That uh, considering so much of it, ends up being anecdotal. That's there's some good information there and, and a good layout of the chronology of it too. Very, very well done. Thank you. Ms. Kane, do you have anything to add to that? No, sir, I'm happy to answer any questions. So before polling the entire council, I want to go back to who initiated this and say, does that uh, give you the kind of information that you were looking for, sir? Um, Chief, we have, uh, you had mentioned that we have given out a warning. Uh, you admit, mentioned that a couple people declined to press charges. As a city, and our, our legal team might be able to answer this too, as a city, do we have the ability to press charges for somebody that does something like this? It depends on the circumstance. The first circumstance was some folks that used an air horn to scare the, the animals out of the trap, and that was at the very beginning. Uh, I, I actually made contact with them along with a game warden that evening and uh, they were warned we did not file those charges uh, we, we I, at that point everything was fresh and new and and um, my discretion I chose to go the easier route and, and start the process out with warning somebody instead of taking one of our residents to jail right away um, the other issues it, it comes down to no victim no crime if you have somebody who wants to file a report if they are the victim, if they're not willing to prosecute and do the necessary paperwork and contact with the DA, no, we are not allowed to pick those charges up. So we as a city, as a city government, we can't discipline people that threaten our citizens? If this, no. If the citizen really? wishes to request a criminal charge, we will pursue that against another resident but we cannot pick up that charge based on what they say. Okay, what about the gentleman that you said you gave a warning to and the next time he will be cited? What could you have done with that? If we, as a council, got together and say there is no more warnings, you are going to be Bo cited. Both of the incidents, the, the, the first two individuals that used the air horn along with the other individual that was making noise and scaring deer out of, out, deer out of the trap, year and a half later, those are both criminal charges that they could have been booked in jail for class A misdemeanors and potentially done some jail time for. Well, I guess what I'd like to do is I'd like to go on record as a council, and I can't do this for everybody, obviously. Um, we're not going to tolerate this. We're not going to tolerate intimidation by residences against other residences. I would encourage us to demand at any time something like this comes up that those people be cited immediately and taken to jail. Do I, can I get some kind of an agreement? Is that possible for me? It, it, that's actually not necessary. Or is that just a mayor's job? That, that, that's not necessary. That's just a, a matter of you letting us know that you want us to enforce the law the way it's written. Yeah. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, you also asked for this to be brought up, so come over to you uh, I uh, I think Brian gave a pretty good synopsis of where I feel although I, I think whether there's a uh, you know a criminal situation I think uh, I'd rather chief use his discretion um, yeah, otherwise, I agree with Brian. This is, these people can't take their, uh, 
they, they, they got to ease up. And Chief, what about if we had the game warden there? Uh, he would be able to press state charges, right? Depending on depending on on the uh, offense, it's it's possible. Yes, okay. when it comes to harassing the hunter, is the the rest title when they interfere with any of the animals or noise or interference with the traps? Yes, uh, the game wardens can pick those up. But didn't the game warden offer to be around when we were trapping this last time, or attempting to trap? They were. We. I had a game warden around early on in the process that was that was watching what was going on. She actually was present the night the first incident took place when I contacted the first two residents, and she spoke to them and explained the situation to them as well. Um, they are not always available readily to follow the trapper around. Is that sure, quite time consuming? I did have them here early on in the process to watch the trappers and watch what everybody was doing to ensure that they were following the guidelines of the permit at that time. In case we had any allegations against the city of wrongdoing, we would have the game wardens there to, to justify what was being done by the crews. Thanks, Chief, appreciate it. So what I'd like to do is go over far left and say, do you have any questions, comments, uh, desire for any action, any, anything at all? No, I don't think so. I agree with Mr. Lancey as far as I would like to leave it. I don't agree with the intimidation being allowed, but I also agree, I'm sorry, I believe it should be the chief's discretion because he's there, he's there in the moment, just like he would with any other offense. Okay, thanks. Sir. I'm trying to figure out where to begin with this. Part of what I mentioned last month that I think got Brian going. Um, this has been an ongoing pattern of behavior by a very small group of people in the city that have, for lack of a better term, effectively subdued other folks because they just don't want the confrontation. Um, I, I could point out, even in the last year or so, examples of hissing in the audience somebody makes a comment about them that they don't like. I mean, very childish behavior. Uh, and I think if we continue with this, we need to make sure that, that doesn't happen anymore. Kind of easy to control under COVID, but uh, assuming we come out from under COVID and we're back to full meetings, we're gonna go right back to that kind of childish behavior. Um, we had uh, a nearby resident, now somebody who lives in the city limits, came in and spoke one time, and she was accosted out in the ante room by that same group of people. Um, early on in this progress, and I've got the email, and in fact, it will be submitted up here from uh, a former member of our Wildlife Management Commission, one of the original ones, that I was trying to get him to file a police report because he had gotten death threats, and he wouldn't do it. Uh, that was back in 2016. <clears throat> um, the list kind of goes on and on, and all this stuff is nested together with the, the behavior of passing out those brochures and getting mad for getting ticketed because they were handing out anti-deer trapping brochures and putting them in people's mailboxes without a permit. It, it's all nested together. It's just this cycle of intimidation that's gone on to people. Um, I would hope that we could assure the citizens that we're trying to manage the deer scientifically, following the guidelines by the people with the PhDs, um, and that work in wildlife biology, and that's their job. And that we should be able to do that without fear of harassment, intimidation, people, oh, another example of guys, people being threatened, they have to put the anti-deer trapping signs up, or else. That happened. Yeah. It's all anecdotal. I can tell you it happened. I talked to people about it. Um, you know, particularly, well, I'm not gonna bring that up. I'll leave that out, because that'll identify somebody. Um, We can heal some of the wounds that this has caused by being very analytical and very scientific about all of this. Um, and then we've got to ask that group of people that they need to quit with the criminal activity or it's going to get prosecuted. It, 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 I don't know, it's very frustrating because I'm, I'm not emotional about it, but I was early on one of the people that was threatened 
I'll admit that. Um, I personally wouldn't threaten me, but <laughs> um, but I was one of those people. So I and I see this pattern go on and then get spun up and and further and further down this path of. You know, we're going to, and it's all nested together, the false accusations of the chief of police for misconduct, the false accusations of the mayor doing stuff wrong. It's all nested into this whole one topic. Um, and I'd like to see our city not get caught up in that anymore, in this group to just kind of understand what's going on and that their behavior is not acceptable. Um, I, I could pontificate for hours on this topic. I've been involved with it since 2015 when it all started um, it would be a shame that we're going to not try to control this and take it to the point where there is a car wreck involving somebody that gets killed you know we're 40 some odd car deer interactions ahead of last year why because we haven't done anything to control the population and it would be a shame to lose a human life because we're too afraid of a small group to take action and I guess I'll climb off my soapbox after that. I could keep talking for hours about it, but it, it's it's a shame it got to the points that it did, and it, it needs to stop. I'm gonna come back to you since it was your turn. Yeah. I guess a uh, couple of things. Um, I mean, much of, much of what we've talked about and that Chief went over is a is in the past, right? Things have been pretty quiet lately. People have, you know, we're not seeing deer signs, we're not seeing protests, not seeing a whole lot online. Um, but what we've been left with is, you know, residents who are not willing to let us trap on their land because of the past behavior. So I guess my point would be, what do we do to ensure a resident who would agree to having a net, you know, in their yard or their property currently, what could we do to assure them that it's going to be safe and okay, and oh, Lancey's going to go. <laughs> He's going to take Arvidsson with him. <laughs> Wouldn't go well. <laughs> no, a, a good point. I mean, that's, that's yeah, a difficult. It's, it's, that's it's certainly a very difficult proposition. Um, and you know, conversations with the individuals. And, but I mean, admittedly, it's a much easier path to say. No. Somewhere else. What do you have, sir? Yeah, I uh, I agree with Todd's pontifications and uh, concerning my comment earlier about discretion with the chief and you know about warnings and such. I think this uh, vicious bunch of people. As we all know, they're a very small handful of Garden Ridge residents. I think they've had their warning. Okay, first of all, evidently this, what I was asked for, for in this council meeting was a result of what was said last council meeting. And it appears that we don't have anything right now to be concerned with. Uh, I thought we did, it's something I didn't know about. So let's, uh, let's just leave it at that. Um, I would suggest there be no more warnings if this ever happens again. And to let everybody know we absolutely will not tolerate any kind of intimidation to our citizens, period. That's it. Okay, and um, I, I just wanna go back on to what Councilwoman Swin said, and that, you know, that is because of the past, when we're asking people now, they're just saying NIMBY. You know? And uh, what we have to deal with is how do we, how do we deal well, with there that? may be some other alternatives. There, there's a, uh, a drainage area, a large drainage area next to Mr. Kniper's house. Could we possibly use that for trapping? There's a city park. That's Although we do Ranch. have a high fence around it. We, I think you're talking about the place that's actually in George Ranch. Mm -hmm. And the uh, HOAs also have been. Um, okay. Pretty, pretty uh, reluctant to have anything to do with this. 
since you broached that subject, in my digging back through the records, we did have a vote in the George Ranch HOA that there's no trapping allowed in George Ranch. Uh, maybe this is something for the Wildlife Committee. I see Mr. Kniper's back there now. Um, if there's no trapping allowed in George Ramp, we can't trap feral hogs either. Uh, well, they're I, selective. I, they I, want, I don't want to tie the two together. Well, but the way I understood that their rule was passed is there's no trapping in George Ranch. Actually, that's an interesting concept. And if that's the case, then they mm -hmm. need to either change their rule or we can't, by law, can't go in there and trespass and trap anything to include feral hogs. I, I don't want to go down that path because we need to remove the feral hogs from there, the area. They're far more dangerous and destructive than the deer will ever be, but if we can't trap, we can't trap. It's a good point. We'll, uh, mm -hmm. It's not for an open discussion with public right now, but what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll bring that to the HOAs as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Anything else on this? I think uh, what I would suggest is that we keep, we keep our ear to the ground. We get anybody that uh, uh, gives us anything concrete, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we can act on it. Um, and uh, we consider, again, I, 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 I couldn't agree more that the discretion of the police department is, is vital in enforcement of the law because they're the ones that are there. Uh, no offense to the attorneys, but they're the ones that are in a room <laughs> later on talking about it. But the people that are really there and confronted with the situation is the, are the ones that we we uh, have a duty up here to um, support. I think so, and that's what I'm hearing y'all say. So that's that. I think we're we're all in agreement on that. But uh, we, I think we can uh, we can move forward with asking some people. We can also um, move forward with testing the waters for if there is an issue, a current issue, uh, climate. Uh, of of intimidation and and, and you know that it, I, I would I would say it's quiet only because nothing's happening not because yeah. they're tired. Uh, I, I think as soon as something looks like it's going to happen, then you're going to you're going to hear lots of rhetoric again. But, uh, okay, is that is that yeah. good for now? Very good. Okay, any, anybody have anything else to add to that, Chief? Thank you very much for he spent he spent quite a bit of time going through all the records. Well, we have to do it anyway, right? But, but uh, um, I appreciate it. I appreciate that very much. And, okay, thank yes, sir. You. You're welcome. Okay, moving on to item 12C. Uh, now, Mayor's Projects, communication report. First thing is if uh, I call your attention to the communication that Garden Ridge had with the local newspaper. You all familiar with that? Um, and they were at least accurate on saying what our tax rate was. It's a weird way that they said what our, what our um, projects are and all that, and I won't even get into that. But I do want to say that if you read the local community news, as it's called, for the date of October 20th to November 17th, the remarkable piece is they have eight cities, eight local cities. Remember when I gave you the rack and stack, I had San Antonio and I had New Ruffles and all that other stuff. Well, they just did the eight local, eight local cities that everybody kind of considers as as sort of near peers at being Cibolo, Converse, Us, Live Oak, Shirts, Selma, Universal City, and Windcrest. And they uh, laid out what, uh, all the <coughs> what all the tax rates are. And uh, high being Shirts at 51, or excuse me, UC at uh, 58.5, uh, and the low being Selma, uh, number eight on the, the hit parade at 19.6. Obviously, everybody knows that with you know 20 something million dollars of sales tax revenue, and that's that's something that they can do. We'll never be able to compete with that. But we we are, yeah, we're number seven. Uh, we're number seven. At obviously, the 32 32 cents. But um, the other thing is, this is just no weighted average or anything, but it's just an average. Take those eight uh, and get the average. The average. Uh, uh, tax rate for those eight cities, we come in 10.775 cents lower than the average. So um, every time you get somebody that tells you how much they pay in tax, remind them that it's probably CISD they're talking about and not not uh, um, the city of Garden Ridge. City of Garden Ridge uh, with the the services that we provide, the answers that we will personally give people that we are told all the time from people that move from some of these other cities, 
uh, I'm just I'm just singing the praises of the city right now. I'm telling you, I'm proud to be here. I'm proud that we're we're all part of this and uh, we're doing. And we collectively, staff, council, commissions are just doing a tremendous job to make that happen. Um, another thing, we're number seven there. We're number two. We're number two. Uh, the, the census is pretty much over, uh, and darn Mountain City came in number one in Texas, and we're number two in Texas. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not very many people up there. Number 56 out of 19,000 cities that uh, were li are listed on there on the census thing. Number 56 in the nation. So our folks did a tre tremendous, phenomenal job uh, in participating in the census, and and I. And I, uh, I'll tell you, it's remarkable and, and, it, and, and not surprising, frankly, that our folks would do that. Uh, we usually, what, the spring is when we'll, we'll start to should get the in information on the results of the census. We Obviously, should. lots of, uh, lots of interest in that for many reasons. Um, keep an eye on that sign um, out at, the, at the, the, the future loon. No updates on it yet, uh, but keep your eyes out and give us a holler. I will say that I uh, got some good feedback. We put a lot of messages, different kind of messages about voting on the sign, and uh, it's probably the number one thing that I've gotten feedback on uh, is that. Um, uh, effective the, the uh, Monday the 9th, which will be the second Monday, I think, in this month, uh, but effective that Monday, I'm gonna start up coffee with the mayor again. I'm gonna start with just one Monday a month, and it'll be the second Monday of the month to deconflict with some other things that are going on in, in here and and uh, with the staff and everything. So um, not a lot of time to, to get the word out on that one, but that's okay. We're going to start out slow. Uh, we'll be uh, masking and distancing and and uh, doing coffee in disposable cups in a different manner and all that. We'll do everything we can, but I want to start to give an outlet for people that want to come in and and. Uh, and ask questions <laughs> or, or talk. Uh, and so we're gonna start that up on Monday the 9th. That's communications. Okay, citizen contact. Uh, I'll tell you a few few stories. Um, uh, first one that uh, is, is important because uh, it's unfortunately not atypical, but uh, we had somebody that, um, that alleged that our water company had dug a hole in their yard uh, on their side of the meter uh, over near some, some stuff that was clearly theirs. And uh, our staff, uh, particularly the, the, the wonderful people that answer our phones, did the best they could to uh, listen, to explain that they would get somebody to look at it. Uh, but this person who, interestingly enough, actually has a history of, uh, of this kind of uh, treatment, treated uh, uh, no less than five different people uh, in the city, and I'm not counting myself, but five different uh, staff members, both in admin and in water, uh, um, in a manner that I don't think was appropriate because everybody was trying to help, everybody was trying to explain that it had nothing to do with the city, that it was that person's contractor that had done some work in their yard, uh, and I have emails from this person uh, you know that uh, I uh, that are, are somewhat entertaining actually but um, after the last door was shut in the face of one of our our uh, employees I wrote this person a note and said uh, I think it's time that from now on if you have any issues in the city you just write to me and I'll research it and I'll take care of it so if you hear about that uh, and that's not and, and I'm, I'm not gonna hesitate to do that anymore um, and uh, uh, but our people don't deserve that. And it's certainly not an isolated incident. And I'm telling you, because I'm also asking for your support that if you hear about anything like that, uh, that you tell us right away, tell me right away, because these people, our, our people shouldn't be treated that way. Doors closed, hang, you know, uh, receivers hung up on, uh, you know, um, accusations of how you know, people don't do anything and they don't work and, and all these other things. It's just, it's, it's entirely uncalled for and uh, I'm, 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 gonna, uh, I'm, I'm gonna intervene and I ask you to do the same anytime you can. Yeah, 
Yeah, I know. Um, let's see. So that's that. Um, we also had another issue that was that came to me from a couple of different channels. You recall when we put the fence in the back, the security fence in the back of Paul Davis Park, our, our, our whole reason for doing that was to contain, you know, so if you have your kids running around there, you know that they're not gonna, they're not gonna one, get away, if you will, but also that nobody's gonna be able to come into the back of the park and, and uh, do anything. Uh, and so it was a logical and important step in, in the improvement of Paul Davis Park. Uh, we, but, and, and, and you know, um, no good deed goes unpunished. Because I looked at it and said, you know, there are people that live up against the park. And if I was living there, I'd go, you know, I used to have this instant access to the park. And these guys put up a fence, and now i got to walk all the way around this fence to get into the park. Uh, and, uh, you know, coming from, from an environment where I jumped a lot of fences when I was a kid, uh, I, I said, you know, we don't want to do that either to them. So we offered that if they wanted a, a gate, that we would have the contractor that's doing the fence put in a gate at their expense, but it would be their gate. They could lock, they would lock it, they would keep the, the key or the combination, and we would consider that basically still the fence. We wouldn't look at it as a gate, we would look at it as a fence. We wrote a letter, uh, and, and uh, I have documentation of the communication I had with this, these citizens, and, and everything was fine, well, and good. A couple of them, it got a little bit argumentative, uh, you know, I want to have somebody else put in the fence, and we said, no, this is not negotiable. It needs to basically be, you know, one contractor doing all the work. Uh, but we got past that. We had two people put in gates, and that was how long ago? Oh, gosh. Uh, a year ago. A yeah, year basically close to a year. Well, uh, then I got a report that both of the gates that were put in didn't have locks on them. And we said, well, that kind of defeated the purpose here. And, and, and I had written a, a written agreement that they were going to lock them. So I called both of them and explained to them the situation and said, uh, in 30 days, we're putting a lock on it, and you won't get a key. Uh, and it'll just be a fence to you, except for it'll be a, a, a gate-looking fence for you. But uh, either you put a lock on it or we're putting a lock on it. But we can't, we can't tolerate that it's just open access for anybody leaving or coming in uh, through your area. Uh, they both rose to the occasion, and I got a report today from the, our police that both gates had been locked. So if you hear any grumbling about that, that's where that all came from. Um, another one, and, and uh, um, well, and, and citizen contact, I, I will give uh, Andy Lavash credit again. He's the one that said, hey, what are we doing to recognize the scouts and I appreciate that and uh, and you know we're always open for suggestions we're always open for what we can do to bring our community together to recognize excellence and recognize effort and so I appreciate that the last one uh, on, on the citizen contact that I'll leave you with is a, uh, is a funny one um, we had a citizen that I've talked to before about issues with the uh, Postal Service and we've had we've had some issues and all of you know we have zero control of what the post office does uh, but we can gather up stories we can we can forward them we can try to be you know and and and, and I have records of writing to Congress of congressmen about the post office me personally so uh, we can do stuff but it's we're it's not real it's not real uh, easy but uh, I talked to this one person and uh, months ago and we agreed that if she encountered anything else, let me know, and we would start to quote, unquote, build a file. Well, she, she uh, called me and said that she was driving on 3009 and uh, saw a bunch of mail on the side of the road. And she picked it up and she said, yeah, you know, who knows what the, what the mailman's doing now with mail, and it's just showing up on the side of the road, and it was nowhere near the address that was on the mail. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, we started to look into it and uh, come to find out, and she actually uh, um, found out as well uh, and talked to the people that own the mail that the guy <laughs> said, yeah, I was driving down the road and my kid threw my mail out the window. <laughs> so as much as we want to vilify the post office, <coughs> in this case, it really wasn't post office. It was a child that, that uh, I, and I can see that happen. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there, there you have it. That, that, that closes that out. So, moving on to item number 13, I'm going to start over on the right side. If there's anything that you, council, would like to have uh, as a future agenda item. 
I have one item. Um, earlier tonight, Brian uh, made a comment about, uh, you know, the, the large leak adjustment. And uh, we're raising the rates on uh, our regular billing, but we may want to raise, consider, or ask the Water Commission to look into raising our cost of water rate. I don't think that's been done in a while. Great point. We've actually been talking about it, interestingly enough. So, no, what we'll do is uh, I would say that next council meeting we will address that with you. That's, that, it's, uh, yeah, we, we actually have been talking about that. Good point. No we, charge, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Just plain to How do you do it without charge? I don't think, I don't think, it, I don't think it's possible. Anything else, ma'am? Anything, sir? I would like some discussion about uh, Council Lady Swint's concerns about billing right before Christmas. If I remember correctly, we put it off this time last year because of Christmas and did it in January. That's K. Right. Well, I thought that was your thing. <laughs> I'm he no, I was hesitant about raising the rates and putting in the AMI system at the same time. She's the, let's not be this. Okay, let's rouge. just talk about the, when we can send it out, maybe after Christmas. Is that possible? We don't have to discuss it now. So okay, not no, we're not going to discuss yeah. it now. Right. I, I'm just trying to give you a good. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure it, it, yeah. we, but we can also talk about it individually. Okay. Um, Councilman Arvis, anything? anything? It, it's uh, just, if I may go back on, because I could put this on for next month, but you mentioned the post office in your mayor's comments. And I wonder if the mayor would like to hear a comment that maybe could be overheard by other people and stay on this agenda. Um, I'm trying to figure out what you just asked. I'm asking you about future agenda items. Is that I know, what you're I know, but I had to? a funny anecdotal post office story that I didn't get in in time. And you mentioned the post office. And I don't want to wait till next month. Um, so you could make it as a, as a, you know, under your mayor's citizens outreach. We're going to adjourn here but, in a minute. But we are, but we're, but we're past that agenda item. I know, but I tried to get attention, is it, but you went on. It, can we, can we do it uh, next month? Would it, it won't be, be right? funny next month. <laughs> And, and, but it's your, it's your um, judgment on whether or not it'll even be funny tonight. <laughs> no, I know it will be funny. No, we'll talk about it next month if I remember. Okay. Well, Maybe I'll um, have another one. We'll, we'll put a city council project, we'll, we'll put you on for uh, post office. Post stories. office, post office uh, information. Yes. Yeah, citizens outreach. It'll be too late, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. I'm sorry I didn't see you. Um, okay, so any re-attacks on future agenda items? Moving on to citizens' comments. Item number 14, anyone out there? Remember, you don't have to have signed up. You get two minutes. Anyone? Nothing going on in school? <laughs> um, okay, going once, twice, three times. Moving on to item number 15. Reports and comments from mayor and city council members. I'll just remind you that it's uh, keep your comments restricted to this this list of topics. Starting on the left side, anything? Post office. <laughs> Post office is not on here. <laughs> Councilman Iverson, anything off this list? Garden Ridge. Somebody's got to somebody's <laughs> hold this together. Uh, go ahead. Do you have any? Um, I love that we got the Boy Scouts in here. Um, I, I'll admit publicly that I'm a little bit biased. Uh, obviously, I'm related to one of them. And two of the other ones have gone to me all the way up to northern Minnesota, backcountry, high adventure camp. Um, and one of them's going with me next summer to the same location. So I'm pretty biased towards these boys. But I was really glad we did that. I want to keep doing it. Great. I, I think that's an awesome event. Good. Thank you. And thank you for uh, helping us to, to, to order it. Uh, and, and, and just counsel, I, I didn't mention it, but it's not that we don't know how to alphabetize a list. The order that we acknowledge them is the order in which they received the, the designation of Eagle. So that was the reason we did it that way. Sir. Ma'am. 
Sir. Okay, that's it for item number 15. Moving on, item 16, executive session. Uh, 16A, you see there's a one and a two. I'm going to now strike number two, and we're only going to meet on 16A1, pursuant Texas Government Code, section 551071. Consultation with attorney 551072, deliberations about real property. Seek legal advice if needed in connection, in connection with the deliberating, uh, the purchase, lease, Exchange or value of real property in regarding related negotiations for city building projects and wastewater utility projects. Uh, we're going to keep the attorney in here. We're going to keep the engineer in here, and we're going to ask everyone else to to uh, leave. You can go out in the lobby and wait. Uh, again, if you've never been through that, and the reason why we're doing that is because there's not enough room in the back for us to social distance and sit back there and to have this executive session. So we have to do it in here. Uh, so uh, we will. Uh, Recess at 9:20 and 9:30. Is that is that enough? Yeah. 9:30. We're gonna we're planned reconvene time here. We're recess. Mm-hmm. Going home at nine. Thank you, Ryan. I guess so. Maybe see you. Maybe some. Hopefully, you guys are on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you. Thank you. Session at 9:50 p.m. And may recall any posted item then uh, from our executive session. So in 17, I'll ask. Council, do you have any, any actions to take? And the answer is no, un unanimously. So moving on to item 18, uh, I need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Place four with a motion. Can I get a second? Second the motion. Place five with a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Unanimous. We are adjourned at 9.50 p.m. Thank you all very much. <laughs>